away from beautiful Fisher Field here on the campus of Wagner College in Staten Island, New York, Highland Symphony is proud to present to you NCAA football. Today's matchup is an NEC battle between the Central Connecticut State Blue Devils and the Wagner College Seahawks. Hello again, everyone. I'm James Overton, joined by Joe Nugent. Today is homecoming, so we're going to have a big crowd. And right away, when you talk about Wagner College, you talk about the great success that they, that they have had, you have to start with their head coach, Walt Hamline. Yes, as long as Walt, is, since Walt has been up here, James, uh, he's been over 500 every year. He's never had a, a, a season below 500. His record of 127-45-2 uh, and two is uh, just a, one of the most outstanding records in the, in the entire country. Ten postseason uh, appearances, uh, playoff appearances, and, of course, the national championship year in 1986. So Walt Hamline right there shown on screen has certainly turned this Wagner College program into one of the premier uh, programs uh, on the East Coast. And if you're Walt Hamline, as an offensive minded coach, your job gets a lot easier when you have someone like number four Rick Surreal on your team. Uh, Ricky Surreal is worth the price of admission and the people that are watching our game today uh, are going to see one of the outstanding backs in, in, the, in the NCAA. He's uh, He's a, not very big, but uh, this year, 684 yards on 120 carries and nine touchdowns. There is Rick there, and uh, again, Hamline's one of the best coaches at this level, and, and Rick Cyril is certainly an All-American candidate and makes the uh, Wagner offense go. And as you can see on the graphic, he needs just 32 yards to become the fourth Seahawk to rush for 3,000 in a career, which is very, very impressive. Another one question mark that they do have on the offensive side is their quarterback, Jeff Skinner. Well, Jeff Skinner uh, took over this year, and he was a question mark right from the start, James. And uh, he's had his ups and downs, and Wagner is basically a running team. But uh, for Wagner to be successful today against Central Connecticut, Jeff Skinner is going to have to play well. He's competed, completed a little less than 50% of his passes, 817 yards, six touchdowns, and eight interceptions. That's, the, that's the, the biggest problem. The coaches are very optimistic about him, though, because he is very athletic and he has an extremely strong arm. Now let's go to the other side of the football when you talk about well, what, what Rick Cyril is to the offense of this team, Ryan Linder is for the defensive side. Well, we met Ryan uh, on my show Sports Close-Up before they kicked the ball off, and I was very impressed with his poise, his personality. He's a leader on the field and off the field in the locker room. And he was an All-American, a preseason All-American candidate, and Ryan has certainly lived up to that with a team leading 36 tackles. He has four sacks, and this is a very strong offensive Central Connecticut team. Ryan Linda will be the leader defensively, number 55, shown here for Wagner College. He is the leader of the Seahawk defense. And now let's go to the other, to the other team, the uh, Central Connecticut State University Blue Devils. Their head coach, Sal Cinturino, He's in his sixth season. His, his record is not that impressive, but they have high hopes for this year's team. They come into this game 3-3. Three and three. They're 1-1 one and one in the NEC. And there's, they, they have a lot to, to look forward to with this team. Well, James, you know, the, the thing about Central Connecticut that has impressed me is the fact that even though uh, in the six years that Sal has been here, their record of 18-37, and 37, it seems like a very poor record. But, boy, <laughs> when it comes to Wagner College, they must circle this on their calendar every year because when the, they see a Seahawk uniform, whether it's here or uh, up there uh, in their home field. They have given Wagner a very tough time. They beat them last year, 49-42, to 42, in one of the most wild football games in the country last year. And so uh, Central Connecticut uh, gets ready for Wagner, and uh, I think this is their number one rivalry on their schedule. So I think they're going to be a, a tough t uh, task for Wagner today. You talked about last year's game. It was homecoming for CCSU. And in that game, number 24, Stan House for CCSU, rushed for five touchdowns. And when you look at the, at the, the career records for CCSU, Stan House, it's his house, so to speak. <laughs> he leads he leads the team in career points, uh, rushing attempts in a season, touchdowns in a game, touchdowns in a season, touchdowns in a career. Right. He's all NEC along with Rick Sorrell. This is going to be a battle of two running backs today. Well, uh, when you talk about Stan House, the, what I, the, the parallel I'm going to give is Stan House is Jimmy Brown to Central Connecticut. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is the franchise player. He runs it, he, he catches it, he scores their touchdowns, he keeps their offense moving. Uh, he, he, they just wouldn't go anywhere without him. Wagner knows it. There's a picture of the young man right there. Uh, 
819 yards and 160 uh, carries already. Uh, five touchdowns last year against Wagner. You're going to see an awful lot of number 24 today. And their quarterback, number 17, Keith Tulin, he's been injured. He was injured in their opening game. He, they, they tell me that he popped his shoulder in the mm -hmm. second half. Before that, he was outstanding against Robert Morris. The, here's the, the thing with Keith Tulin, the quarterback for Central Connecticut. When he's on the field, Central Connecticut is a much better than 3-3 three and three football team that they record. When he got hurt, this team just did not function well without him. He's, the, the coaching staff says he's 100% for today's game, which is the reason why most people feel this matchup between 4-1 and one Wagner and 3-3 three and three Central Connecticut is really a toss-up. It's an NEC battle. It's going to be, it's a rivalry. We've already said that. It's going to be a big rivalry for a long time. Right now, we're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, we will have the starting lineups and the opening kickoff. It's Wagner College homecoming, and it's coming up next on Island 16. Don't go away. the same old delicious food you've grown to love. Yeah, stuffed pork chops. And the same old service that makes you come back for more. Hey! With two floors of remodeled dining area, expanded for parties up to 55. So bring the family or some friends. But chances are, they'll already be here. Hey! The Elm Park Inn. Dinner for tonight and tomorrow. When it comes to Staten Island and sports, think of one thing, Victory, as in Victory Sports, 1732 Victory Boulevard. Victory is the leading sports supplier of equipment, uniforms, and largest dealer of Apex hats and apparel. We also feature for all sports, custom embroidery, silk screening, trophies, plaques, team jackets, and jersey lettering. We are the top supplier to Staten Island's colleges, high schools, softball, and little leagues. Come in and see George and Chuck at Victory Sports, where every customer is a winner. Good tires, good service, good people, good gear. Wait no longer to buy tires. See Frank Sanzone and his crew at Kirk's Staten Island Tire and Auto. Get super savings on quality Goodyear tires from Staten Island's only authorized Goodyear dealer. Kirk's Staten Island Tire and Auto. It is reassuring to know that in times of need, you have a service and a family you can trust and rely upon. The Casey family has continued this tradition of trust and dignified service to the Staten Island community for over 120 years, with two locations on both the North and South Shores. From the very first broadcast, Casey's has been a proud sponsor of local sports programming. I hope everyone enjoys the games as much as I did when I watched my own two sons play on television. The Lagressi family cordially invites you to examine the statin for your wedding, bar mitzvah, communion, or any party or gathering from 25 to 350. Our complete wedding package includes an extra-long cocktail hour, carving stations, and a flexible menu to suit your taste. The Staten Lounge is open Tuesday to Friday for lunch and Wednesday to Saturday evenings featuring live music and late snacks. Lagressi Staten, first-class service and four-star cuisine for your party. Call us today. With hard work comes a record of achievement. Whether it's battling on behalf of our youth and our seniors, or securing essential services and a better quality of life, whether it's working to protect our health and well-being, or just simply fighting for respect and the right thing, Councilman John Fusco is there for Staten Island. Councilman John Fusco, he's the one you turn to. Welcome back to Wagner College. While we were at break, we had the coin toss. Wagner won the toss and has elected to receive. And right now, I believe they're going to introduce the Wagner College starters. It, uh, Central Connecticut's uh, kickoff team is already on the field. I don't think they realize that, the, uh, that it's going to be a couple more minutes before we kick it off. But, uh, James, we should say that this is our first visit to Wagner College since their renovation. Uh, beautiful new uh, seating facility here at Fisher Field. Uh, a beautiful practice field uh, for the Wagner College football team right behind us in here. Brand new press box and it, 
certainly was a, an impressive uh, facility that we're seeing for the first time here on cable. We've got some footage of that that we're going to show at halftime. Right now, let's talk about this series a little bit. Wagner leads at 5-4. to four. The last meeting, we talked about it a few times. 49-41, CCSU, it was their homecoming. They beat Wagner on the strength of Stan House's five touchdown runs. And ladies and gentlemen, if you think you're, you're going to be watching a boring defensive battle here today, I doubt it because uh, here are the scores of the last time times these teams have played 22 15 Wagner 28 21 Wagner 40 to 35 Wagner and last year 49 to 41 Central Connecticut so the scoreboard better be operating well today because it may get blown out by about the third quarter James I think we're going to see a lot of points again even though this Wagner College team has been playing terrific defense so far this year three of their four wins were against teams that do not have a win yet. Right. They're winless. Iona, St. Fra Francis of PA, and St. Peter's. So this is going to be a test for a defense that's played very well all year long, but I think this is the best offensive team they'll be facing. This is the type of game where if you're an offensive coordinator, you're just sitting there rubbing your hands together because you know there's going to be big numbers put up today by a lot of people on both sides of the ball. And again, for the first time in three years, Wagner College has been blessed with beautiful weather the last two years. Homecoming has been a monsoon where it's really been ruined by very poor weather conditions. This year, beautiful day. Our view here from the booth is of the Verrazano Bridge in, in, in Brooklyn. It's uh, kind of a breathtaking view here from Fisher Field, and uh, we're ready for a good one. We are just about ready for the opening kickoff. Oliver Benitez, number five, and Rick Surreal, number four, are back deep for Wagner. Adam Wilkinson is going to kick it off for the Blue Devils. We're just about ready to get underway. And there's the opening kickoff. It's going to be short. Cyril will take it from the 17-yard line. Heads up field. Gets a nice hole. Heads to the left side. And he's taken out of bounds across the 40. Excellent run back by Rick Cyril. Good start for Wagner College as they will send their offensive unit out on the field. Now the uh, public address announcer here at Wagner called that to 17, but I think Rick really started that at the 13-yard line. So that's a nice 28-yard return for Rick in the Seahawks in business at the 42. If we can now take a quick look at the starting lineup. In the backfield, it's Skinner, Lockhart, and Surreal. Abel at tight end. Bain and Frankie as the wideouts. We'll get back to that as soon as we can. Right now, we've got Skinner in the eye formation. Lockhart and Surreal. It's play action. Skinner's rolling out to his right. Gets a block. He's going downfield. He's got a man knocked away at the last second. He was looking for Jason Bain, the freshman wideout. Beautifully defended by James Melchione. A very nice play. Here we're going to see the rest of the Wagner College starters. We have James. the Runge twins that tackle Matt and Mark Moran and Avery of the guards with Thomas Konsowitz as the center. And they came out firing the football. Um, Our defensive line, we have the tackles Robinson and Konopka with Graziano as the nose guard. Linebackers Clemens, Brisson, Zaski, and Westerdahl. Second and ten. High formation once again. This time the pitch is going to be to Cyril over the left side. And he's stopped. Fumble right away. CCSU picks it up. It is recovered by number 44, David Parker. And CCSU is in business right away. Well, James, first of all, the opening play, Skinner was just a little, little late getting the ball to Bain or else that would have been like a 50 yard gain on first down so they went from there to pitching it to Rill and the, the star of the Wagner offense coughs it up on his first carry in uh, here's Central Connecticut in business on the 40. Here's another look at it. And it comes loose. And there's a fumble on the other end of the ball and it's picked up immediately. I, <laughs> I, I, you know, we talked about the offensive teams. Darius Marshall comes up with the fumble recovery on the first play from series from the Blue Devils. Well, you know what, James? It is in the exact same spot That's the football right. was before the fumble. Let's okay. Everybody's had a mulligan, right? <laughs> a, mu it. a mulligan for Wagner, We're a even. mulligan for Central Connecticut. We're all even now. Let's play football. We're even. Let's start it up all over again. From the 42-yard line, it's Wagner ball once again. They're going to go back into the I formation with Lockhart and Cyril. Cyril's going to get it again. At least I'd give it to him to get his feet on the ground. Oh, They're going to no. go play action one more time. 
Skinner back to throw. He's going down the field. There's a flag, and it's just out of the reach of number 84, Chuck Kinsley, another freshman who averages 31.8 yards per reception. Well, we had a lot of contact at the, at the Central Connecticut 35-yard line, and it's either going to be it's going to be pass interference, but which way is it going to go? Against Central Connecticut, James. That's going to be an automatic first down. As pretty sloppy start to this game so far. But I'll tell you one thing, Skinner, who uh, doesn't have a reputation of being a really big time thrower, uh, has shown us a pretty big arm. Automatic first down on the defensive uh, pass interference, but Skinner's just going back and firing. He's showing a very strong arm so far. And from now on, we'll get quiet when the referee's talking. We have a mic today, so uh, we'll get the calls loud and clear. It will be first and 10 now. From the 43 yard line. Back in their familiar eye formation is right in college. Skinner back to throw again. That ball is tipped and almost kicked off. And there is that man, number 44, David Parker again. He's a freshman. He recovered the fumble early and almost picked off the deflected pass there. It looks like Wagner College's game plan, James, at least early, is to throw, throw, throw on Central Connecticut as the only running play resulted in a surreal fumble. The other three have been have been passing plays. Chuck Kinsley comes out of the game now. Benitez is in. He will go wide right. Frankie out to the left. High formation again. Second and ten. Skinner with the pitch to Cyril off the right side. He's going to cut it back. Oh, he is stopped immediately. And, of course, David Parker is there again. This is the David Parker show on defense for uh, the Blue Devils right now. Rick Cyril is a finesse runner, James. He doesn't run you over. He uses his quick feet and great cutting ability. And uh, sort of like a Barry Sanders at the 1AA uh, college level, he's going to make spectacular runs, but there will be plays where he'll be thrown for losses. Yes, he has bulked up a little bit. He's up to about 185, 190 pounds, and they said it has made a difference thus far. They're going to go into a pro set here on third down. Back to throw. Straight drop. Come on a rush. He's hit. And the ball is incomplete. Coming on a blitz was Hector Concepcion. And he gave him a pretty good shot after he delivered the ball. Justin Abel, number 92, tight end, could not hold on. It'll be fourth down, and Carl Frank will have to come out and kick it away. Even if Abel was able to hold on to that when there was good coverage and it would not have been a first down, so we're getting our first punt after the exchange of turnovers. Lewis Webb, number five, and Daryl Taylor, number six, will be back to receive the punt. Frankie, back to kick it away. Frankie averages 34.9 per punt. Boots this one away. It'll be Webb, who loves it. That ball is loose. No, I don't that's, think so. I don't think that's going to be a touchdown. No, I don't think he touched it. It was picked up by number 83, Charles Kaufman. The referees. We're going to have to see if he touched yeah. it. I, don't, I can't tell from this angle if he touched it or not. We're going to have to check it out here on our replay. No, no, that, didn't no touch that didn't touch anybody but the ground. So we have the Wagner College coaching staff right to our right here that's screaming at Walter Hamline's uh, headset that it should have been a touchdown. But uh, the replay showed that uh, hit the ground on a fly and Central Connecticut takes over at their own four. Good call by the officials. First and ten from the four. It'll be Vanderhoof and House in the backfield with Keith Toolin at quarterback. And it'll give us to House, who heads up the middle, and he stopped immediately for a short game. James, the way I see it, Wagner's going to be geared up for House's runs. Central Connecticut will be geared up for Cyril's runs, so they'll go to somewhere else and then go back to their stars once they loosen up the defense. But you know that this Wagner College defense, and especially Ryan Linder at middle linebacker, is looking for number 24. Jason Scholes, number 48, was there in the tackle. It'll be second and nine, a gain of one. Little movement, no flag. They're going to swing it out the house in the backfield, who has nowhere to go. Host of Seahawks out there to take him out of bounds. Chad Wiley was one of the men there. Looks like a gain of about three, making it third and six. His house takes the swing pass. He catches the ball as well as he runs with it, James, an all-around athlete. 
Mike Bagnasco, number 75, coming off the field now as Wagner adds another defensive back. Tulin going to throw, rolling out. Nice play. Broken up nicely by number 11, Lewis McMillan, the quarterback. Well, McMillan, that's as good as you can get on coverage. A cornerback can't play better than that, and they force Central Connecticut into, they'll be punting out of their own end zone here with 10.39 to go in the first quarter. Perfect coverage on Mike Grizz, who's the main man on offense, as far as receiving is concerned. Ryan Carrigan, number 22, will punt it away. He averages 30.9, and Oliver Benitez will be back to receive it. Ten men coming for Wagner, James. They're coming after the ball. Bad snap. Short punt. Benitez coming up the field at his 40. He loses control of Unbelievable. it. Unbelievable. Scramble for the ball. Unbelievable. It's still loose. This is going to be on Football Follies from Sports Illustrated. Unbelievable. Soon. Central Connecticut. CCSU comes up with the ball. That was number 39, Garfield White, who came up with the recovery. Go, go. You're right. This, <laughs> this, this, is may, this, this may mean that, first of all, the, the snap was bad. This he is makes ugly. It. Now this watch. Ugly. Oops. Well, it's okay, there it here it starts there, and now it's follow the bouncing football down the field. Connecticut from the and finally, the Central Connecticut has it at the Wagner 44. Tulin in a pro set. Nice hit to Grizz. Grizz is taken down on a very nice tackle by number six, Jamar Johnson, but he hit him perfectly right in the numbers on the slant pass. Well, we were told that Tulin's a good one when healthy, and that sure, that's a big-time arm right there, James. That's a bullet over the middle. And they said his arm isn't as good as it used to be. I'd love to see him before he popped his shoulder. I don't know how these people recover, having had that problem myself when I was young. I don't know how these athletes do it today <laughs> with these shoulders that come out and then they play a couple of weeks later and look as good as new. It's tough amazing. Guys. Tough guys. Eye formation now. Wagner stacking the line. They come firing through. That's nice right. tackle. Ryan Linder right in his face. Oof. The preseason All-NEC Conference star stops Stan House for a loss. He stopped House, and whoever that blocker was in front of House, Linda stacked them up like a stack of cards there. Tremendous play by Ryan Linda. And Ryan Linda is not a big guy at all. Nope. He's only 5'10", 225. As linebackers go, that's not extremely big. It'll be second down now. Pro set again. Two in play action. They're going to swing it out the House. What a nice tackle. Number 11, Lewis McMillan was there. Linder was on his way over to help out. As Linder and House are having a couple of words going back to the huddle. Well, I'll tell you, that's only a, that's only like a two or three yard gain, James. But what a great play by House anyway. I mean, uh, you can see the athleticism. Oh, you right. sure can. I mean, that's a, the pass was behind him. He mm -hmm. was swinging out. It was to his opposite shoulder. He catches it. Instead of an incomplete pass, at least he get, picks it up to a couple of yards. Uh, third and nine from the 20. Staggered in the backfield now. There is a flag. It's going to be tough to see who moved first. I don't know if, if Wagner came into the neutral zone or not. They're talking it over. And we'll have our call. That'll make it third and 14 and push Central Connecticut, James, more importantly, a little bit further out of field goal range. So this is a big defensive play coming up here for the Seahawks early in the game. They've got Vanderhoof and House in the backfield. Grizz is out to the right. Webb is out to the left. Turin is straight back to throw. He's got a man. It's complete to the big tight end, number 88, L.T. Brown, another All-NEC candidate, averages 13.3 per reception. That is a big man with good speed, a very nice tackle, and uh, Central Connecticut, I believe, will be going for a field goal here. Yes, they will. Number 14, Adam Wilkinson is in. He's four out of ten on the season for field goals, as long as he's 42. This will be from 33. Mike Grizz is the holder. Snap is good. Kick is up. And it is straight and true. We've got a 3-0 ball game. CCSU takes the quick lead. 
I was watching uh, the both teams warming up, and I, I happened to look at Carl Frankie, who was kicking, uh, practicing his field goals, and he was banging field goals from 50 easily. He, he hit about five or six in a row from 50 yards out. Well, here's a replay of the three points that uh, put Central Connecticut on the board from our end zone camera, and as you can see, that split right down the middle with plenty to spare. And so a turnover on a punt from their own end zone sets Central Connecticut up, and they take a 3-0 lead with 9.57 left here in quarter number one on a beautiful day at Grimes Hill. Finally, the weather has smiled down on Wagner College homecoming, a big crowd for this new facility, and um, they'll be partying well into the night, though hopefully the parties will be a happy one and Wagner can win on homecoming day. Right now, they fall into a 3 nothing hole. Wilkinson is ready to kick it off. Benitez and Cyril are deep. Bass and Schultz in front of them. Now, last time they kicked it to Sorrell, if I was Central Connecticut, I would be kicking it away from Ricky, and this time they do. This time they're going to kick it to Benitez. He takes it at about the 10. Heads out to the left side, and he is taken down on a nice tackle, trying to get a number. That is number, I believe it's 39. That's a 14-yard return. Garfield White is there on the tackle. 14-yard return for Oliver Benitez. So Wagner will cue it up one more time. There you see this homecoming crowd still filing in for the festivities today. First and ten, I formation. Give is going to be to Surreal, who heads right up the middle with a nice head of steam. He's taken down across the 20. One of the things that, uh, James, that when I had the, the Wagner College players on at the beginning of the season and, and Coach Hamline, uh, he kind of said that he was going to get Justin Lockhart a lot more involved in the offense this year, that he's a very good runner with good speed, but it really hasn't come to fruition yet. And he even said this week again that he would try to get Lockhart more involved, but so far Justin's just been a lead blocker for Rick Cyril and blocking on the passing attempts. Hasn't touched the ball yet. Second and two. Let's go, Skinner! Straight back to throw. He's going down the field. Just out of the reach of number 84, Chuck Kinsley. They're trying to get him. They've been trying to get him quite often today. Right. They, they're trying to go deep on the Central Connecticut uh, defense. And so far, the only success has been the pass interference call. Damian Baker, number two, was the corner that had the coverage there. And kind of an unusual call. Second and two, they throw the bomb. And now they're set up third and two. So now either Cirillo Lockhart is probably going to have to pick this up on the ground with Central Connecticut now looking for the run. Come on, oh. Just as oh. Third and two. Skinner calling the signals. He's going to roll out and throw again. Nice block by Cyril. He's going down off the fingertips of Frankie. There was a little contact there by Baker, but no flag. And it's going to be fourth down. Play calling was a little... Uh, yeah, I'm a little baffled early here, James. Again, Cyril picks up eight on first down. The blocking was crisp. He runs. He runs. He's their star. He's the one that they go to. And after an eight-yard run on first down, they forget about Cyril and Lockhart, throw two incomplete passes, and punt it away. Webb and Taylor are back deep. As Frankie's going to kick it away. <laughs> Good snap. It looks like it's going to be, it's going to fall. Taylor is close to it. I'll tell you, a very poor job by the Central Connecticut special teams mm -hmm. letting both of those punts that Wagner's had today drop when they could they have been, been caught. They could have been returned. Sure. They definitely could have been returned. Why that wasn't caught, I'll, I don't know. There was no green shirts around. He just let it hit the yard. Yard. It's a 51 yard punt from Carl Frankie. And CCSU is going to start it up again. There's our Casey Funeral Home scoreboard. CCSU with a 3 to nothing lead here with 8.47 left to play in our first quarter. And a pro set offense now. Right, we're showing Blitz to give us the house. House breaks the tackle, gets him to the secondary. Nice straight, tries a straight arm. Jason Schultz couldn't get it done. Schultz with a nice tackle. Excellent game by Stan House. 
I thought maybe if he just would have put his head down and kept running instead of trying to straight arm, he might have gotten past well, I, I thought, James, I couldn't agree with you more. We're going to see House now break into the clear here. And I thought he was just off to the races. At this time, it looked like he had a pretty good instead. He decides to do a little physical damage. And he ends up with a good game, but I thought that was on the way to the, to the end zone. First and 10 for Tulin. Drop straight back. Right across the middle of Vanderhoof. He's taken down by Ryan Linder. He was spotted at the 46 yard line. Well, right now, you can see with House running the ball and Tulin looking very comfortable at quarterback, we were told that if this young man stays on the field, mm -hmm. doesn't get hurt when he's healthy, he's a real good one, and he's showing us that so far. Definitely. Second and two, I formation. Showing blitz. The ball is loose. There's a flag down. Wagner was definitely offsides. It looks like there was contact in the neutral zone early. Neutral zone, for sure. We'll see. And here comes our call. Wagner was coming on a blitz. They were sending some of their safeties up. And, and guess what, James? It did distract Tulin mm -hmm. and forced him into the fumble. He saw that safety blitz coming, and he took his eye off the snap, and the fumble resulted. But uh, unfortunately for Wagner, they were in his neutral zone when the snap came, and it's a first down for uh, Central Connecticut as they cross into Wagner territory at the 49. First and 10, Van Hoof and House in the backfield with Tulin. Grizz out left, Webb out to the right. Back to throw again. Oh! He's got time. Almost picked off. Great catch. That's Brown. That's that's LT Brown with a beautiful reception. Darius Marshall came flying in for the interception. Couldn't get it. And LT Brown comes through with a big catch. James, it looks like to me like this number 88, LT Brown, is almost as big an offensive weapon as House is. Uh, Wagner's got their hands full with him. He's a load at tight end. This team has got some, some excellent offensive weapons to use on, on today. Absolutely. He is six for seven. Tulin is for 52 yards so far. Talk about a hot start. Brown with the He's going to go back to pass. Oh, a little contact early. There's a flag. He was looking for Brown once again. Derek McCormick was there a little bit too early that time. Boy, did Tulin throw that ball. It looked like he looked like a, a he looked like Mike Messina throwing a <laughs> fastball. Oh, look at this. He really put a lot on that. And you know what? That's a heck of a defensive play. I know it's pass interference, but I but can't. still good coverage. Hamline and, and his the coaching staff cannot be mad at that play because uh, right there with Brown, uh, Central Connecticut's going to have another first down by penalty at around the 25-yard line. They have to go back to the line of scrimmage and march off 15 yards from there. So CCSU marching down the field. Come on, D. Uh, the strength of the legs of Stan House, the arm of Keith Tulin and the Wagner College penalty so far. Yeah, two turnovers and a bunch of penalties have not hurt the Central Connecticut cause, that's for sure, but still, they're the crisper offensive unit so far in this game. Straight back, it's a draw to House. He's got plenty of running room up to the left side. Gets a block downfield, and that is gonna be a touchdown for Stan House. The good ones, don't mess up there, James. He had too much room. Great deception on the draw. And once Stan House got into the secondary, it was all over. That's why he's a great one, and it's 9 nothing Central Connecticut. He accelerated, got a nice block late downfield, and that's all she wrote. Oh, that's a little a, statue. Yeah, of yeah that's what it was. All right. You know, we didn't even see that on the original. It was a Statue of Liberty call, and House loves it. Look at that. He's got five carries for 45 yards so far, and that touchdown. Wilkinson is in for the extra point. He missed it. That is no good. 
Oh, <laughs> nine <laughs> nothing. Right. Statue of Liberty, beautiful, James. A little bit of everything. Well done out here today. So we have a nine to nothing lead for the Blue Devils. And right now, with 6:47 left to play in the first quarter, Walt Hamill is going to try to rally his troops a little bit from the early downfall. Well, you, we, we should talk a little bit about the, you know Central Connecticut three and three, Wagner four and one, playing on its home field. You would think Wagner would be a little bit of a favorite in this game, but James, the, Walt Hamill's team has not really had that tough early season schedule to prepare themselves for a game like this. Uh, we've already mentioned that St. Peter's Iona and St. Francis of Pennsylvania are all winners, and that's three or four Wagner's win. They had a very good win over post, 12 to 10. Yes. And the one road game that they had uh, that was a tough road game, they played pretty well in losing to a very good Robert Morris team, 21 to 9. But again, the second half is going to be a lot tougher than the first half. And so far, the first nine minutes of this game has been very tough on the Seahawks. CCSU scoring drive, six plays, 81 yards. As Wilkinson's going to be short again. This time it's going to be Benitez again from about his 11. Gets upfield, tries to get to the sideline, and he is cut down. Looks like Harold Eaton was there for the tackle from the 28. And see Central Connecticut James wisely, I think, kicking away from Cyril, mm -hmm. who got a very nice return to start this game off. And the last two times it's been to Benitez. And again, Wagner now definitely needs a drive and keep control of his football and get right back in it. First and ten for Wagner now. Two receivers out to the left in their eye. Cyril up the middle. He's going to be stopped for a very short game. Hector Concepcion, their safety, who leads the team in tackles, is one of the first men there. Along with Dan Brisson, number 49, the inside linebacker. Going to give him a gain of about two yards. And again, surprisingly, Joe, Lockhart has not touched the ball yet. No, and again, I, I look for that to happen, and I think it should happen for, for them to become more diversified on offense. The pitch is out to Surreal, out to the left side, trying to get to the corner, and he's stacked up. Number 54, Steve Kanuka, comes flying through. We've heard a lot about this young man. He's 6'4", 280 pounds. And the, the coaching staff and the SID has told us that he already has pro scouts looking at him. The NFL is interested in that young man. He's only a sophomore. And he's going to be very difficult to handle for this Wagner offensive front today. And again, James, the offensive play calling for Wagner has been a little confusing here in the first quarter. Last time they were throwing on second and two, and this time they were running on second and eight. They're back in their eye formation. The receivers are out to the right. He's going to roll out to his right. He's being pressured, gets it away, high throw, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Jason Bain, too tall, and they're going to have to kick it away again. Ed Zasky, the inside linebacker, was coming on the pressure that time. Bain so, was far, open. so far, Jeff Skinner is 0 for 6 throwing the football. And James, Bain was open, but when you're asking people to throw on the run on the rollout, that's a tough throw for any quarterback. And Bain wide open, overthrown by Skinner, and again, Wagner punts. And let's see if Central Connecticut can do a better job on special teams this time and catch the football, not let it drop. Webb and Taylor both back deep, averaging 7 and 5.7 yards on return, respectively. Frankie kicks it away. Nice high punt. Did he call for a fair catch? That was, you know, if we could see that again, that was a little bit iffy. He put his hand up. I thought he might have called for a fair catch. You know, I think the sun is in the eyes of the punt returners uh, at this end of the field. And, uh, I think you're right, James. It's uh, I think that was a sort of uh, that was, shield, that was his, a shield bit his eyes kind of deal. Yeah. It's a 37-yard punt, four-yard return for Webb. And CCSU is going to queue it up one more time. In their pro set with Van Hoof and House in the backfield. They're going to give to Van Hoof this time. He pulls his way maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Well, that's the first time Central Connecticut tried to get their full back involved. And uh, there was nothing there. Might have lost a little bit. And as we see the Wagner 
front four and then a little help from the secondary come up and stuff it for about a yard loss, James. Burns, second and, 11. and Marshall were there on the tackle. He got back to the line of scrimmage. They'll make it second and ten now. There's Brown coming in motion. Play action. He's got a man right open oh, in the seam, man. and he man, hits that, him right that? in the numbers. Boy. Reception for number 33, Mark Strasser, a backup tailback, and he drilled him right between the threes. How pretty is that? I mean, how pretty is that? That time, Brown came in motion, James, stopped, stayed in as a blocker. Watch number 88 do a great job. We saw him catching it. Now he stops, blocks, perfect protection. And you talk about an arm. Man, can this tool and throw the football? And Carnacion was there for the tackle. It's another first down for the Blue Devils. Toolin going to give the house again. This time, he's, oh, he's not wrapped up. He got away from Encarnacion, spun away, and got a few more yards. Last year when we were here, we saw that. Roman Encarnacion, had, that was his one problem. He covered very well. He didn't wrap up when he tackled. Well, when you talk about a, a back the quality of Stan House, you're not going to get him down without a fight. And most backs would have been wrapped up for a loss there, but you're talking about one of the premier running backs in the East in one double-A football, and House turns what should have been a two-yard loss into an eight-yard, seven- or eight-yard game. Right now, Central Connecticut is absolutely dominating, dominating both sides of the football. And right now, Taylor is now in, in the game at quarterback. Hmm. There was a little quick switch that we did not catch. Darrell Taylor, the backup quarterback, is now in the game. And obviously, he was in the game just to run that one quarterback draw play. Because here comes Keith Tulin back in. It didn't look, he didn't look like he was injured at all. But the change in quarterback caused a delay game penalty. Central Connecticut's coaching staff got a little bit too tricky for their own good that time. It well, cost them five yards. Taylor does a lot more than just back up at quarterback. He also returns punts and kickoffs, and he was in as a wideout in a couple of series. So that could be a very, a very special weapon if you can use it properly. Second and nine. In the I formation. Back to throw. There was another seed, but it was behind Mike Grizz that time. It's incomplete. It'll make it third and nine. That time, Central Connecticut sent three receivers to the left, including Brown, and Tulin looked that way and then pivoted and threw to the right. But he, that was his first poor effort of the day as he threw it right into the ground. Number 29, Otis Bass, comes into the game as an extra DB as Mike Bagnasco comes out. They're going to send Grizz out to the left, Webb out right, I formation. Now they split out Brown. Tulin's going to drop back. He's being pressured. There's Tyler number 58 for the sack. Matt Burns was also there. Chad Wiley, the first real big play. Vanderhoof the players make chance. plays. Oh boy, he was being held and everything else. Wiley makes the first big play for Wagner. And the Seahawks hope that's a momentum switcher. Benitez is back deep as Carrigan's going to kick it away. Good snap. Ooh, that is a bomb, James. Nice high punt. It's going to be a fair catch, and it's going to carry through the end zone. It'll be a touchback, first and 10 from the Wagner 20. And Wagner's going to try to get something started this time. We have 2.13 left to play here in our first quarter. There are the fans. A couple still filing in on this brand new facility. Our first time up here since it's been redone. And Wagner's going to come out of information again with Lockhart and Cyril. This time they're going to give to Lockhart up the middle. His first carry, and he's going to make go, a couple James. of people miss. There you go. David Parker, number 44, was there for the stop, along with number four, Mike Westerdahl. That's, and we, you know, we kept talking about it. That's what they need. That's sure. exactly what they need. Exactly. Lockhart finally touches the ball, and here's the man that I think should be carrying the ball 10, 12, 15 times a week. He gets the ball for the first time, and he knocks people over. He 13 yards. You have to use his, uh, him as a weapon. 
James Melchiona, number 25, paid the price that time trying to make the tackle. It'll be first down. This time they're going to give it to Cyril, who tries to bounce to the outside. He got some room. He's headed for the sidelines. And he is on tackle, taken down. Number one, uh, Hector Concepcion tripped him up. And he still almost kept his feet as he ran along the sideline. Sideline. James, what set that run up? That run was set up by Lockhart's run on the previous play. They gave it to Lockhart. They gave Central Connecticut something else to think about. And now Cyril, the, the, the star, bounces it outside, turns on the Jets, stumbles, and I think he stepped out of bounds at the 40. It's a 27-yard run. Be first and ten from their from the 40 of CCSU. Lockhart, the lone man in the backfield, gets the carry, Look spins off a tackle. I think there's going to be a. Uh, I think somebody lined up in the neutral zone there, but again, Lockhart was that back by himself there and banged for six yards. On Rick Cyril's last carry, he went over the 3,000 yard mark in his collegiate career, becoming just the fourth Seahawk to do so. Yeah, somebody on on some, one side of the ball, because there, nobody moved, but somebody was lined up offside on the snap, and it looks like, it, unfortunately, it looks like it was Wagner. Here's the call. We have illegal formation, six men on line, offense, five yards on the field, third down. One of the Wagner wide receivers on that play, James, was supposed to be up at the line of scrimmage and was a, a yard off, and that was the call, and it wipes out Lockhart's six-yard carry on first down. That'll make it first and 15 now. There's Rick Cyril, who has gone over 3,000 yards in his career. Congratulations to him. And before he's done, I'm sure he'll hold just about every rushing record that Wagner College has to offer. First and 15 now. Lockhart again, gonna get the deal. This time he's gonna be he's almost stacked up. Oh, yeah. He just won't go down. That's just, what that, that is a great, great three yard run. I mean, that's just, he shouldn't have gotten anything there. He's a tough kid. Melchiona was there on the tackle, helped out by Kanapka. Now you're gonna see Lockhart here, James. I mean, he's cracked right here. Keeps the feet going, keeps going, keeps going. And uh, boy, the coaches really appreciate a run like that. It's only three yards, but it should have been nothing. Cyril comes back in the game as Frankie heads to the sidelines. This could be the last play of the first quarter, James. 25 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Skinner going to go back to throw. Deep drop. Oh, big going deep downfield. A little bit too far. Once again, he was going for Jason Bain, and apparently they seem to think that Mr. Bain can go deep on the corners of CCSU. But number two, Damian Baker was there on the coverage. Well, Skinner had all day to throw, James. He stood back there three, four seconds looking over the field, and he, when he finally threw it, he, I think he made a poor decision because Bain was very well covered down the field. The safety came over to help. He was double teamed, and but Skinner found no one else. Cyril comes out on third and 12. Third and 12, 17 seconds left in the first quarter. Lockhart, the lone man in the backfield. He's going to drop straight back again. He's going down the field again, a little bumping. And number 84, Chuck Kingsley could not haul it in. No. I see Carl Frankie and Justin Abel, a couple of the Wagner veterans, looking at Walt Hamline. I think they're a little bit confused about where Skin is going with the football, James, because these deep uh, these deep passes, are they're covered very well. I mean, there's a lot of jerseys around the Wagner receivers. And again, they punted away with 11 seconds to go here in the first period. Tariq Reddick had the coverage there. Taylor and Weber back deep, as Frankie's going to kick this one away again. He's trying to angle it. Oh, that's a nice job. That is a beautiful kick. A flag is down with one second left to play in the first quarter. What's the flag for? No, I think he just meant to throw uh, a white sack Maybe he meant to throw a marker. Yeah. Right, he meant to throw a marker instead of a flag. Great job by the special teams of Wagner College with only one second to go in the first quarter. That is a beautiful punt by Carl Frankie. Yeah, both punters are having excellent days. He's going to pick up the flag. You meant to throw a marker down instead of the yellow flag. Yard, 
There's the Wagner sideline. First and ten, CCSU. One second left in the first quarter. On the four-yard line. They give us to House. Heads up the middle. Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. That is going to be the end of our first quarter. With our score, 9 to nothing, CCSU with the early lead. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with quarter number two in just a moment. Working your way through the maze of finding a mortgage isn't something you should do alone. You need a partner, one with a proven track record, one that's helped Staten Islanders find the lowest rates on mortgages for over 10 years. That partner is NSC. NSC can help you find the loan that fits your needs, save you from endless paperwork, even arrange for no income verification. Just call 273-1010 for your free pre-qualification. NSC, a better way to buy a home. Welcome back to Island 16's coverage of NEC football. We are starting the second quarter here. It's 9 to nothing. CCSU with the lead. And they have the ball deep in their own territory. It'll be second and nine from the five-yard line. And the story of the first quarter, James, was Wagner turnovers and Jeff Skinner's inaccurate passing. He still has not completed the pass. He's constantly tried to go long against Central Connecticut. It hasn't worked, and the Blue Devils in control, 9-0. Go back to pass. Oh, there's another laser, and he's got number 10. That is Doug Boast with the reception. <laughs> one he, step he away. One, exactly. No. One step away from taking that one. 95. 95 yards. Take another look yeah, at you're it. You're going to see Doug Boast catch another laser shot from Tulin, and that one ankle prevented him from going a long, 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 long way. Derek McCormick did the job there. CCSU now with 90 passing yards to Wagner's zero. They're going to run a reverse here to Lewis Webb. He's trying to get to the outside. And there's a nice tackle by number six, Jamar Johnson, who was not fooled. Well, that was kind of a slow developing reverse though James and, and I think Wagner should have done a better job of stopping that they didn't that was a 12 yard pickup and a first down mm -hmm. another first down for CCSU Colby Mark on the 34 yard line first and 10 there's a hand off the house Tries to bounce to the outside, but he's wrapped up. Jamar Johnson was there again. Ryan Linder also helped out on the tackle. Now Wagner's going to have to figure out a way to put more pressure on Tulin when he goes back to throw James because so far he's had his way with the Wagner secondary when he has time, and he's had a lot of it. Second down and 10. Got back to the line of scrimmage. They're going to go back to throw. And that is... Oh, did he get it? Did he pick that off? No. No, he didn't. It's incomplete. But number 11, Lewis McMillan, came flying in. I thought he had that one. No, well, McMillan read it perfectly, James. Watched the perfect read by Lewis McMillan on this, and I thought this was going to be six going the other way as Tulin makes his first poor decision. And McMillan cuts in front of the Central Connecticut receiver but doesn't come up with the football, and it's third and ten. Central Connecticut is 0 for 3 on third down so far. Third down. They're going to oh, give the house. house. He gets a good. nice hole. Ooh, Breaks nice the tackle. tackle. And he's going to be short of a first down. Jamar Johnson came up to stop him short of a first down. It looked like he was going to have it easy, but Johnson came up with a beautiful tackle. Right. 
Give Johnson, Jamar Johnson, a tremendous amount of credit for this one, James, because when House gets loose in the secondary, he usually gets done what he has to get done, but that time they're two yards short in Central Connecticut. Punts. Benitez going to go back deep once again. Kerrigan to kick it away. Benitez is from Miami, Florida. Freshman. Part of the, the Florida connection on this team. There's a short punt. It's going to go inside the 30. It's about the 25, 24 yard line. And Wagner will take it over in their own territory once again. 33 yards on the punt. No return for Benitez. As there you see Rick Cyril number four. From the 24 yard line, first and 10, Wagner College. 12 25 left to play in the first half. It's going to come to the line with Lockhart, the lone setback. Cyril is out in the slot, and they give us to Lockhart, who goes up the middle for a short game. Garfield White, one of the first men there on the tackle, along with Dan Brisson, number 49. Oh, I think the adjustment period better come in the second quarter, James, before it gets too late. Obviously, the game plan coming in was they thought that they could throw deep on Central Connecticut, and here it is, 12 minutes to go in the first half, and they're down 9 nothing. I think Wagner has to readjust his thinking and start to go to Cyril and Lockhart. He's back there alone again is Lockhart. This time they're going to drop straight back. He goes out to Frankie, makes a nice catch. Won't go down. He's finally taken out of bounds. His number 49, Dan Brisson, comes over to put the hit on him. Well, that will make young Jeff Skinner feel a lot better. That is his first completion of this ball game. David Parker was also there for the stop. Wagner trying to draw up some plays. Trying to draw up anything at this point. It'll be first and ten now. The I formation again. Lockhart once again up the middle. Got to maybe the 40. They're going to give him the 40 yard line. So with a four receiver set and Lockhart alone in the backfield, Cyril takes a seat on the bench for Wagner College as they try something new on this drive, James. And I don't know if that's such a good idea. Here we see Jeff Skinner was one of nine, 11 yards thus far. That was his first completion to call Frankie. Cyril is in the game, I'm sorry. I correct myself, Cyril's he is in a wide receiver, right. yeah. Lockhart alone in the backfield. Second down, Skinner back to throw, quick hit, almost a one-handed grab by Jason Bain, the ball was behind him, it's going to be third down. Bain is the one that Skinner has gone to most today, unfortunately for the Skinner-Bain connection, it hasn't connected yet, as again, Jason Bain has to leap high and tries to bring it down with one hand, doesn't get it, Wagner again, third and long. Wagner's 0 for 4 on third down conversions in this game. Cyril comes out of the game once again. Lockhart alone in the backfield. Skinner, straight drop. He's got Frankie across the 50 yard line, still on his feet, taken down at the 40 yard line. Paul Frankie coming through for these Seahawks. Comeback pattern by Carl Frankie. He actually catches the ball. He makes things happen. This what this time instead of trying to go vertically way down the field, there's Skinner sets up nice, gets into the throw. Frankie comes back to the football this time, and then after the catch, James picks up another tough 10 yards. Great play by Carl Frankie and Skinner's best throw of the day. Baker and company there on the tackle. It's first and 10 from the 40-yard line. Deep in Central Connecticut territory. Cyril heads up the field. Taken down for a short game. Well, Rick is a young man that's used to getting the ball 25, 30, 35 times a game. He has not had a good workload here in the first half. He picks up three. And so far, they've only been able to get Rick free on just one running play. 
Seven for 37 so far today for Rick Sorrell. That will bring up second down. High formation once again. Frankie, the one receiver out right. Play action, they're gonna run a reverse. There's a flag down on the play. Reverse was number 28, Kevin Good, sophomore running back. We've gotta see what the flag was. It's gonna be holding against Wagner College. They're gonna back him up a little bit more. See if we can possibly find that hold. Very often on plays that teams don't run a lot, and this was there's a- There's a hold right there. Yeah, there's the hold on number 68. Is that on that on the corner for Wagner? I believe that that's 66. 66, that's Chad Moran with the hold. And very often when you run a play, James, that is deep in your playbook, uh, there's mistakes made, and that time the hold came on the corner, and Wagner faces now a second and looks like 16 from, their own, from the Central Connecticut 45. Brian Clements was there for the stop, but Chad Moran held him. They're going to back him up. Wagner, four penalties for 36 yards so far in this game. Lockhart, the lone setback. They're going to give it to him once again up the middle. Couple more yards, not a lot there. I don't know. Looks pretty straightforward when Lockhart's in the backfield alone, he's getting the ball. And it's second and 16. And they ran straight ahead for a two or three yard gain, so now that sets up third and 13. So I really think that the offensive play calling has left a lot to be desired here in the first half for the Seahawks. This is the ninth play of this Seahawk drive. 8.53 left to play in the half. Play clock down to five. They're in the shotgun. Back to throw. He's being pressured. Throwing out some blocks. Throws downfield. Just throws it away. Absolutely no one there. Number 54, Steve Panopka was there on the pressure. Number 42, Brian Clements was also in his face. And Wagner on fourth down. We'll have to give it away once again. Hello, Marty. Marty Mannheimer working the dish for us today. Getting all those great sounds of the field. Good us. man, good man, a lot of energy, Marty. We have filled our quota for Mannheimer shots on the day. <laughs> Marty's made an appearance on every game so far. Darrell Taylor back to receive Frankie's punt. Well, Frankie's really having a good day with his leg. Taylor stumbled and just barely held on to that one. Having problems on special teams today. It's a 35 yard punt, no return for Taylor. And Central Connecticut gonna start deep in their own territory. There's the CCSU sideline. They have to be satisfied with the effort that they've received from both sides of the ball so far. I think that they're probably a little shocked that they have the Seahawks shut out here midway through the second quarter, James. First and 10, play action. They're gonna swing it out to House, who makes a nice catch, and he's got some running room. House up the left sideline is bumped out of bounds by Ryan Linder after a long run for Stan House. Now that and that is, is uh, you know, when you see a running back with a full head of steam, Catching the ball out of the backfield like that. You know, Tulin hit him right in the numbers, in stride. That's a beautiful play. You know, James, what, what's baffling to me, though, is this is about the third or fourth time they've run the same play. This is the star of the football team, everybody knows, and uh, you got to have somebody out there on the corner preventing him from turning up the field. And House just rumbles and stumbles for about, well, didn't stumble. He, he just bolted for 24. 24 yards, and now he's going to get the carry. He's up the middle. He's going to be Stop. Maybe he got back to the line of scrimmage. Number 94, Vincent D. Gaetano was there for the stop. Well, he's got great hands, too. He's really shown us the good hands along with the great running ability. He has a James, a, a real terrific athlete, is on display here today. No gain, second and ten. Wagner showing blitz. It's going to be play action. He's going to roll out to his right. He gets hit as he releases it. 
They came on a blitz, number 32, Derek McCormick, the free safety, came flying in. Got a hit on Tulin as he got away. He was looking for LT Brown, but couldn't find him. Okay, Wagner has put uh, themselves in a good defensive position here at third and long, third and 10. You can't give Tulin a lot of time. I expect some sort of uh, pressure this time, uh, James, from either the linebackers or maybe even from the corners uh, to do a little blitzing, but they better be careful about House slipping out of the backfield for a little screen or a little uh, little slant in if he slips out of the backfield. That's who I'd be looking at here. They're going to go to House. Better flare it out in the flats. Bad pass. A yeah. little bit low. Even Stan House can't catch no, that one. Not even Mr. House that time. It'll be fourth down. And Oliver Benitez will go back to receive for Wagner. Go ahead, go. Brian Number 22, Brian Carrigan to kick it away. Good snap. Pressure coming in for number 22, Darius Marshall. He couldn't do anything with it, though. That ball's going to roll inside the 30. It's going to end up being a good punt. It didn't look like much, but he got the big roll. 38-yard punt from Carrigan. From the 29-yard line, it's going to be first and 10 for Wagner College. Wagner going to go back to their I formation now. Bain out to the right, Frankie out to the left, Lockhart and Cyril in the backfield. The pitch is out to Cyril, he's going to go to his left. Stacked up nicely, number 44. David Parker was there to put a hit on him. Well, until and unless Rick Cyril and Justin Lockhart start having some success on the ground, James, this is going to be a very long day for Wagner College because this is a team that cannot rely on Skinner to win games for them through the air. Uh, he's a good quarterback, but he's not a kind of guy that can just you can ride him on your shoulders in a second-half comeback. The offensive line has got to start doing some better blocking for Rick Cyril and for Justin Lockhart. Cyril out of the game. Benitez is going to go wide left with Frankie in the slot. Lockhart in the backfield. Bain out to the right. He's going to straight drop straight back to throw. He's going deep downfield once again, looking for Bain incomplete. Number two, Damian Baker was there once again. That's about the fifth or sixth time that they've tried that pass, and it's just not working so far. Well, he's not getting it there. He keeps going to Bain deep, 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 and the protection's outstanding. I mean, there's no one around him, so he's got all day to find somebody. So maybe he should start going to the intermediate routes across the middle and, and move the chains with first downs instead of getting bomb happy here. He reminds me of Darryl LaMonica <laughs> back with the Oakland Raiders. The fact that there has not been a sack so far is, is a, a very nice testament to this Wagner offensive line. Eric Robinson has seven sacks for CCSU, and we have not heard his name called once today. Back in the eye formation, Cyril on third down. He lost his helmet. That was a little bit of a wake-up call. Oof. Wow. Number 54, Steve Kanaka was one of the first people there. And Rick Cyril is in a verbal match with the C CSU defensive unit right now. But guess what, Rick? He's right a little bit fired up at his own yeah, teammates, too. So look kidding. at him. He's trying to get yeah, some yeah, life he, out of these he's, guys. He's angry. And uh, he's also, boom, he, he's also hurting after that stick. They have completely stoned him and the offensive unit in the first half. It'll be Webb and Taylor back to take Frankie's punt. High punt. Oh, how did he hold on to that Steven one, James? ball came in with a nice hit. Are they going to call that he interfered with him? Is there a, a certain amount of uh, space that you have to give a punt return? Or maybe the, the space wasn't given. Kasher and Steubenvall were there like on the a, hit. A three yard, uh, it, it, he didn't hit him before he caught it. No. I mean, that 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 was that might be a tough call against Wagner. If this goes against Wagner, I don't know. That's going to be tough to see. We'll have to hear the call here from our official. Here we go. What's he going to say? And he's interfered with him trying to catch, catch the, the, the punt. That's a 15-yarder. 
I don't know if we have that one again, but that was a little bit tough. Here it is again. We'll see it now. No, that's, that's a that, bad call. That is a bad call. That's a bad game. call. It's good, good football by Wagner, and that's a tough call against the Seahawks. That is a bad call. Len Koster, number 49, was there. He made the hit after the ball was touched by Lewis Webb. That's a bad call. Excellent replay, though, from our truck. Now in Wagner territories, it's going to be up the middle of Vanderhoof, who's going to be stopped for a short game. Every once in a while, Vanderhoof gets a couple of yards up the middle just to make sure that the Wagner defense knows he's there. But again, you cannot let House get free on the flanks. You've got to funnel him towards the middle, and these pass plays to the right and the left, he cannot let House get outside. He's done it too many times here in the first half. It'll be second down. Second and eight now. More play action. It's a great catch. Did he grab that? They're yeah, going to call it a catch. It's only he might have been better off letting it go. Right. It's another. Uh, Toolin again uh, has thrown a couple of bad passes here in the second quarter to House, but he catches them even when they're bad. That's a <laughs> great catch. He catches catch. everything. That young man can catch everything. He lost a yard in that one, it looks as if. going to be third down. He's going to wag a lot to his right. He's got some pressure. He's going down the field for Webb. Ooh. It's incomplete. It looked like it went through his hands. Yeah, he, he got it there. Toolin got it there, James. McMillan and McCormick were there on the coverage. The ball was there. It looks like it went straight through Webb's hands. Lewis Webb, only 5'4", 145 pounds. See if we can take another look at that. Tulin throws this one 50 yards, James, from the 50-yard line to the goal line, and, I mean, the pass was right there. Tough it. angle, but he, he made a great effort. Benitez back to receive the punt. Carrigan gets it away, trying to angle it. And it went out of bounds at the 15. It looks as if they're going to mark it. The Seahawk taking a little time off. Good look straight up at the new Wagner College press facility that we're in today. Mm -hmm. So it's first and 10 from the 15. Cyril, the lone setback. Oh, excuse me, he's in the affirmation. Didn't see Lockhart there. The give is to Cyril up the middle. Gets a little hole. And he's finally wrestled down by number 39, Garfield White. Well, Rick came off the field, as we saw last time, fired up after getting his helmet knocked off. Sid Downing, one of the Staten Island Cable employees. Oh, here you go. One of the youngest fans here today at Fisher Field, enjoying the beautiful weather. <laughs> Glad Sid could come out and join us today. She works hard for us in ad sales. It'll be second down now in the affirmation again. They're going to roll out to the left. He's looking downfield, had nowhere to go, and he's hammered out of bounds. But he picked up the first down, and Skinner makes a wise choice. Kanopka came through and rocked him out of bounds. Plenty of time, James. They have all of their timeouts left in uh, 320 something left in the second quarter, so they got plenty of time, even though they got a long way to go with the timeouts and the clock stopping on first downs. The Seahawks should be in no rush, mm -hmm. and they desperately need to get on the board because, boy, were we wrong in our assessment of what we thought was going to happen. We <laughs> thought we'd have a high scoring shootout, and here's Wagner looking across midfield. First and 10 now. Motion from Bain. Up the middle to Lockhart, runs into his own man. Takes a tackle and he is taken down by number 50, Ed Zasky. Lockhart looked, ran into, looked like he ran into one of his own linemen. You know, one of Walt Hamline's big concerns, as told me at the beginning of the season, was his offensive line. I think his offensive line has done fine today. They're doing we, a great job. Yeah, really. They, they have no points, but you can't point to the front. Uh, they, they've protected Skinner and they've run the ball fairly well with Lockhart and Cyril. 
it's really been the uh, the long passes that they've gone to too often. Pitch out to Cyril, who goes nowhere. Number 42, Brian Clemens, the outside linebacker, was there for the hit. It's going to bring up a third and about two, James. 2.43 left to play in the half. It'll be third and two. Yeah, let me play coach here on this play. I'll give it to Lockhart. I'd give it to Lockhart right up the middle, and then if I got the first down, maybe I'd call timeout with about 2.20 to go. But I'd give it to Lockhart right up the gut. That would be my call. Third and two. Going to go back to throw. Quick hit out behind Frankie, incomplete. And that's why I don't throw it. He has not had a good day throwing the ball, has Mr. Skinner. No. And they're going to have to kick it away. Skinner got an earful from Coach Hamline as he came off the field. Could it be that Jeff audibleized at the line of scrimmage there and went away from a play that uh, Walter wanted him to run? Again, with the pass completion percentage he's had today, I just can't throw the ball and give it up there. Webb and Taylor back to receive. Frankie is booming his punts today. He sure is. He's having a great day. Webb from the 25. Lots That's a nice room. scene. And look at the little guy go. He breaks another tackle. He's got one man to beat. Carl Frankie can't stop him. He is taken down by Steuben Ball. Boy, does that third and two play now look large. Wow. Talk about an exciting run by Lewis Webb. You got to like Lewis. He does it for us little guys. Little water bug, isn't he? <laughs> very, very impressive. Again, Frankie outkicks his coverage just a little bit. He got a very good punt off, but then Webb, once he gets right here. 43-yard return. Oof. And Frankie, who's a good athlete, slowed him up, slowed just, him enough. up just enough for the so pursuit. So Steubenval can get there. Central. CCSU threatening again. He's going to go back to throw. He's looking for Grizz down the sideline. Incomplete. McMillan kind of edged him out to the sideline. That's good coverage, though. He took away the inside part of the field from him. James, McMillan's had a very good half mm -hmm. of football in the secondary. CSU really only needs about one first down to get in field goal range here. But, of course, they're looking for more with 1.57 to go in the first half, winning one, leading 9 nothing, and looking to add to that lead that Wagner gave up the football on a third and two play. They'd elected to go to the air. It didn't work, and now Central Connecticut knocking on the door, looking for more. Second down. Quick hit right up the middle to Brown, oh. who rumbles across the 15 before taken down by number 22, Darius Marshall. And, you know, There's a young we man. talk about house a lot, but this young man can tell you, throw the football. He can throw the football, and this guy, Brown, he's, he's got NFL-type size. This yes, he guy, does. He, he's, he's got great hands, and he does a lot of nice things. First and ten. Wagner showing pressure. Oh. The middle. They've got Brown, and he's going to be stopped short of the goal line. Great read. Number great 48. Read. Jason Scholes was there for the stop. If it were not for Jason, that would have been six more. Scholes did a nice job. Scholes does a nice job here, James, of keeping this very talented kid, Brown, out of the end zone. I thought that and he did it sort of while laying on the ground. Yeah. And uh, Central Connecticut is about to put Wagner in a big hole here. From the two, big surprise. Oh. Mr. House takes it in for a touchdown. House is in the house. Stan House with his second touchdown of the day. And we are looking at a 14 to nothing lead for Central Connecticut no. State University. Scoreboard was wrong, James. It's 15 to nothing. 15, excuse me. And if I'm Central Connecticut here, I go for two. I go for two here. 15 point lead, you kick an extra point, that means Wagner could tie you with two touchdowns and two point conversions. So I would take a timeout. And, and I would go for do. two points. They're going to take a timeout right now. That scoring drive, four plays, 32 yards. So far in this game, LT Brown, four receptions, 45 yards. And Mr. House, 11 carries, 64 yards, and two touchdowns. And there's the play of uh, the big tight end, LT Brown, getting down to the two-yard line. And then on the next play, Mr. House leaps into the end zone for a touchdown. Jason Schultz with a nice tackle. Jason Schultz, one of, well, he was three members of the Scholes family to attend Wagner College. There was Jack Sr., Jack Jr., who I played baseball against. He was a great two-sport athlete here. Then there's Jason. And now, 
the starting quarterback for this JV team at Wagner is Jamie Schultz, mm -hmm. the youngest of the, the Schultz brothers. So the fourth member of that family to come to this school. Great family of athletes. They've had a, a, a lot to do with the great success here at Wagner College. And James, as we get ready to close out this first half that's been dominated by Central Connecticut, uh, we should tell the fans that the, the major sponsor of today's game is Casey Funeral Home and Jack Casey, who was the Rob Trophy winner on homecoming day in 1980, uh, 1968. Uh, he, he, we're going to have an interview with Jack at halftime. He had a son, Brian, that attended Wagner College here. He's a very good baseball player. Yes, I played against Brian so, as well. Halftime interview with Jack Casey of Casey Funeral Home, a great sponsor for Staten Island Cable. Taylor is in at quarterback now. They're going to run an option. And did he get in? I think he, he did. They're going to call. Well, one, one set say, down one and one set in. in. They're going to say he's in. Two-point conversion is good. Daryl Taylor, Mr. Everything. We're going to have to start calling him Slash pretty soon. He returns punts. He's out on wideouts. This time he takes in the two-point conversion to make it 17 to nothing, Blue Devils. And there is a lot of gloom and doom on the sideline closest to us. Wagner College in the state of shock, losing 17 to nothing, homecoming day. Big crowd, beautiful day, and so far they've given their fans nothing to cheer about. 17 to nothing. Blue Devils with the lead. Back to receive the kickoff again. We're going to have number five, Oliver Benitez, and number four, Rick Sherrill. As there are the stands, these, these newly built stands here at the at Fisher Field, which we will talk about at halftime after your interview. Wilkinson to kick it away. And it's going to be surreal this time. Taking from about the 15. Trying to find some room. Trying to bounce to the outside. Nice straight arm, but he can't get away. That was number 20, John Atala. Backup cornerback on the tackle. No, a minute and 11 seconds to go. Now, really, Wagner has no choice, James. Down 17 to nothing. What their game plan was seemed to be go deep, and now they're going to have to go deep. Here's a replay of the 18-yard return by Rick Surreal. And so far, they've run 13 times, passed 19 times. Oh, excuse me, it's the other way around. they passed for 13 and run for 19. Is there. He tries to hit Bain. He's got him. And did he get out of bounds? No, he did not. Jason Bain finally catches one, though. So, But again, they stopped going on that deep route. We're under a minute left to play in the first half. Still in the eye formation. He's going to roll out. There's some pressure. Nice block by Cyril to give him some time. Tries to go up the sideline. Did he stay in bounds? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Jason Bain. Quiet all game now. Two in a row. Two big catches. Tiptoes along the sideline for a beautiful reception. I think that Wagner's got their timeouts left. There's really no need to really rush if you want to call timeout and talk things over. What do we got here? It's going to be a timeout. Timeout Central Connecticut. The Blue Devils call one. They were not prepared on defense that time. Boy, what a big boost it would be for the Wagner College Seahawks to get on the board before halftime here, James, and give a little life to this crowd in this and a little confidence to especially Mr. Skinner who suffered through a very bad first half until those last two passes. There's Coach Hamline talking to Jeff. Forty-one seconds left to play here in the first half. Seventeen to nothing, Blue Devils with the lead. Next week, uh, James, uh, Staten Island Cable will return to the high school scene in Staten Island. We'll be at Port Richmond's field for a game between the Port Richmond Red Raiders and the Tottenville Pirates in the second half. When we get a little break, we'll talk about the two huge high school games that will be taking place tomorrow on Staten Island. First and ten, they're back in the line formation again. Straight drop, looking deep, looking deep, going for Cyril in the corner, and it is picked oh. off by Damian Baker. Yes, it is. That's a That is a huge blow 
to this Wagner College drive. That is a very, very bad decision by Mr. Skinner because uh, they were looking for it. They were waiting for it. The Cyril was not open. The only person that really had a shot at the ball, James, was Baker. He caught it, made a nice catch, and Wagner comes up empty-handed. When we start the second half, Central Connecticut's going to get the ball to start the second half, so things are really looking gloomy for the Seahawks right now. Wagner's third turnover today is probably their biggest one. They were marching. They were ready to drive. Now with 33 seconds left. Darrell Taylor's going to QB here. Got to look for an option play. I'd look for a kneel down. He just tries to go straight up the middle. Just trying to let the clock run out. 28 seconds left. And I think Walt Hamline wants to get into the locker room, and I think his Seahawks are going to get an earful. He oh, know, he's going to call a timeout. That's a timeout. Hamline called himself a timeout there. No. That, well, well, why? There's nine seconds to go. No. <laughs> Another kneel down, and uh, it's only second down, so they even if they use all their timeouts, mm -hmm. they're not going to make Central Connecticut punt, so I don't understand that decision by Walt Hamline. Be sure to pick up your copy. 17 to nothing. Nine seconds left here in the first half. They're putting more time back on the clock. They're going to make it 17 seconds instead of nine. Well, that would, if Wagner uses all three of their timeouts, James, that could make Central Connecticut punt out of their end zone. Mm -hmm. well, I hope we don't have to wait for the clock to run down all the way. We're running well, it down from, run down one, from minute. one minute. Yes. So 17 seconds. Calls a timeout. Well, they could call two more timeouts and, you know, stop the clock with uh, four or five seconds to go mm -hmm. and then come after the punt, James, and hope for a safety or, you know, a block punt. That's the only thing that Wagner could have happen here. I mean, if I'm Central Connecticut, I kneel on the ball two more times, right. make Wagner use their timeouts. But again, that would force a fourth down. Now, now of course, Central Connecticut could now change, could change their plans and get the ball to Mr. House here and maybe go, go for a play, but I doubt it. They're going to stay with Taylor. They're going to give the House up the middle. He was hit down by number six, Jamar Johnson. Uh, Wagner's going to call timeout again. Gonna call another one. Wow. With nine seconds left this time. Can house the well, we've, we've questioned his play calling <laughs> on a few other occasions. So, uh, you know, it's just, it's normal for us to do it again here, I guess. Well, we, we can remember the last time that you and I were together up yeah, here, James. He go for the two. That they went, the score was uh, 26 to 21, and they scored a touchdown to go ahead by five, and they elected to kick the extra point. And as mm -hmm. soon as we saw the field, the kicking team come on the field, the both of us said, what's going on? They kicked it, and they ended up losing 28-27 the last time we were up here. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we still can't figure out why. <laughs> no, we can't. With nine seconds left, Daryl Taylor will remain at quarterback. He's got a full house backfield. He's still got it. He's still got it. Well, He's going to be wrapped up. That'll take care of everything because it's a first down. Darren Plummer and that's the end of with the, first the tackle. Down. Clock runs down to zero. And that is the end of our first half of football here at Wagner College Homecoming. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more. You are watching Island 16. Don't go away.
time at Bradley Pizza in Willowbrook. Eddie and the rest of the family want you to experience their special recipe pizza dough for the crispiest crust on Staten Island. Monday through Thursday, get a large cheese pizza for only $6.95. Bradley Pizza also has heroes, rolls, and dinner entrees, and Ralph's Ices for dessert. Eat in, take out, or call for free, fast delivery to these locations. Bradley Pizza. Try us tonight. Call 983-9191. In 1886, Richmond County Savings Bank made a promise to bring Staten Islanders mortgages they could afford. Today, we still offer more mortgage options to save you thousands of dollars with low fees and competitive rates. Our mortgage counselors can help you choose the best mortgage so you and your family can live more comfortably. Richmond County helped us with our 30-year fixed-rate mortgage. Richmond County Savings Bank is an equal housing lender. The Lagressi family cordially invites you to examine the statin for your wedding, bar mitzvah, communion, or any party or gathering from 25 to 350. Our complete wedding package includes an extra-long cocktail hour, carving stations, and a flexible menu to suit your taste. The Staten Lounge is open Tuesday to Friday for lunch and Wednesday to Saturday evenings featuring live music and late snacks. Legressi Staten, first-class service and four-star cuisine for your party. Call us today. For the time that you'll need the most strength and support, may we introduce the Harmon Home for Funerals. Family owned since 1937, we've nurtured a reputation of comfort and compassion to families in need. Specializing in pre-planning, our experience is in making your final preparations easier. With a home-like decor, the Harmon Home provides an intimate, soothing atmosphere for you to receive your loved ones. Located on Forest Avenue, the Harmon Home for Funerals will be there in your time of need. For more information, contact Terrence McGinley at 442-5056. Nansen Park, Staten Island's premier location for corporate picnics, family reunions, and outdoor weddings, has just given their banquet hall a makeover, designed to comfortably hold up to 175 people. A Taste of Honey, the exclusive caterer for Nansen Park, offers customized and affordable menus, including carving stations, pasta bars, and cold appetizer tables, in addition to buffets and dinners. Oh, and don't forget to ask about our less formal room, perfect for small showers and birthday parties. Call today and book your next celebration. A Taste of Honey, the banquet hall at Nansen Park, 9830465. Welcome back to Island 16's coverage of NEC football. It's 17 to nothing, Central Connecticut with the lead. There we have, there we have our halftime stats. Rushing yards, <laughs> rushing yards for Wagner 83, 86 for uh, Central Connecticut. Passing yards, 133 to 61. Total yards so far, 219 to 143. First downs, not too bad. Turnovers is the big key. Turnovers and penalties, Joe. Well, the way I see it is the problem Wagner's had in the first half, James, is their game plan was one that I guess they wanted to surprise Central Connecticut by going long, going deep. And Skinner kept going for Bain and just didn't uh, get it done. And uh, then when they tried to get back to the running game of Lockhart and Cyril, they were down by nine. Now they find themselves down by 17. And, of course, Stan House, we knew, was a great one. 13 carries for 70 yards here in the first half, and he scored two touchdowns. Toulon has been all that he was advertised to be when healthy. He's 11 for 18 and 145 yards, his longest being a 25-yard gain. LT Brown, a big weapon from at tight end, four receptions for 47 yards. And C uh, Central Connecticut will get the ball to start the second half, so Wagner is in deep trouble, down 17 nothing. Hamline, I know, has to be a very unhappy football coach. He's probably g giving his team an earful right now. So uh, we'll see what happens in the second half, James. But Wagner's got a long way to come back. The scoring here in the first, uh, Wilkinson with a 34-yard field goal. Then House had the nice 27-yard run, and he backed that up with a two-yard run for a touchdown. That gives us our 17-0 score. We're going to take another quick timeout. We'll be right back with more action on this NEC matchup today between CCSU and Wagner College right here on Island 16.
knows that fighting for Staten Island means stepping out from behind a desk and getting into the community. It means being proactive. It means being hands-on. For Councilman John Fusco, sometimes it means literally doing the job yourself. Councilman John Fusco, he's the one you turn to. It is reassuring to know that in times of need, you have a service and a family you can trust and rely upon. The Casey family has continued this tradition of trust and dignified service to the Staten Island community for over 120 years, with two locations on both the North and South Shores. In the very first broadcast, Casey's has been a proud sponsor of local sports programming. I hope everyone enjoys the games as much as I did when I watched my own two sons play on television. When it comes to Staten Island and sports, think of one thing, victory, as in Victory Sports, 1732 Victory Boulevard. Victory is the leading sports supplier of equipment, uniforms, and largest dealer of Apex hats and apparel. We also feature for all sports, custom embroidery, silk screen, trophies, plaques, team jackets, and jersey lettering. We are the top supplier to Staten Island's colleges, high schools, softball, and little leagues. Come in and see George and Chuck at Victory Sports, where every customer is a winner. Good tires, good service, good people, good gear. Wait no longer to buy tires. See Frank Sanzone and his crew at Kirk's Staten Island Tire and Auto. Get super savings on quality Goodyear tires from Staten Island's only authorized Goodyear dealer. Kirk's Staten Island Tire and Auto. Working your way through the maze of finding a mortgage isn't something you should do alone. You need a partner, one with a proven track record, one that's helped Staten Islanders find the lowest rates on mortgages for over 10 years. That partner is NSC. NSC can help you find the loan that fits your needs, save you from endless paperwork, even arrange for no income verification. Just call 273-1010 for your free pre-qualification. NSC, a better way to buy a home. Everyone on Staten Island knows the Forest Avenue Strip is the place for fun and great food, and the number one spot on the Strip is Jody's Club Forest. Stop in and enjoy Jody's famous chicken salad for lunch or one of the many beef specialties on a dinner menu any family can afford. There is live entertainment on the weekends, and for those seeking added excitement, Quick Draw can make your night a winning one. Let your hosts, Jody and Mary Haggerty, show you that good people and good food can be found under one roof at Jody's Club Forest. The major sponsor of today's homecoming game at Wagner College is Casey Funeral Home. And with me, I have Jack Casey. He's been a friend for a long time. He's been a sponsor here on cable for a number of years. He's part of our cable family. And Jack, first, uh, thank you for being part of the cable broadcast for many years. I know on your new commercial that you've done for Staten Island Cable, uh, you emphasize the fact that you've been here from the very beginning. And uh, one of your great pleasures in your life was watching your own two sons, Jack and Brian, play on Staten Island Cable. That's true. Um, when the cable first came out, uh, I thought it was great that the, we were going to bring the uh, the, uh, the boys' sports and the girls' sports uh, on television to Staten Island. Um, I was proud to uh, be the first to, you know, sponsor it, and uh, I think it's a great thing. Uh, I think it, the kids like it. They like to watch the games afterwards, and uh, certainly as a parent, uh, I really enjoyed it. Since the last time we had Jack on as a major sponsor, the last time we talked to him was on Thanksgiving Eve and that great St. Peter's Curtis tradition, which uh, Brian and Jack were a part of in their high school days. And uh, since then, Jack has opened a second funeral parlor. He's been on uh, Slauson Avenue on the North Shore for many years, but now he has a new parlor, and we'd like Jack to tell you a little bit about his new place on the South Shore. Well, on the South Shore, we found that uh, we had a lot of people. Uh, we've been in business since 1875, five generations. And a lot of people we knew from like the 50s and the 60s moved out into the South Shore from parts of New Brighton and Tompkinsville. Uh, I think it was only natural that when the opportunity came uh, to locate out there uh, that we were able to take advantage of it. We have a very beautiful facility, um, tremendous parking, and uh, you know it was a big move for myself and my family, but. Uh, we feel that uh, uh, with what we have out there that uh, we'll be well received and uh, 
it, it, uh, we're very happy to have been able to do it. Servicing both parts of the island now, and of course, one of the reasons why I gave Jack, and Sat on Cable has Jack doing this game on our fall schedule, is that Jack was the 1968 Rob Trophy winner as the outstanding player. Jack was a terrific player here at Wagner College, and there's a great story behind that day. His buddy, Richie Salinati, was the quarterback. The record for most catches in a game was nine. Uh, Jack had five or six going into the fourth quarter, and uh, you and Salinati worked out a little plan, didn't you, Jack? Well, I don't know if it was a plan as much as uh, a necessity. Um, unfortunately, the year before, the, our great undefeated team, uh, everyone was injured. Everything that went, um, you know, almost perfect the year before kind of fell apart the next year. Uh, Pete Bawadi, Joe Mealy, and Tommy Moore, who together gained almost 3,000 yards the year before, were all injured. Richie came over from defense to play quarterback. And... Uh, we were under heavy pressure uh, about the only thing he could do was throw the ball so we kind of uh, worked it out with a few down and outs and a couple coming across the middle uh, it was just the circumstances of the game probably more than I certainly was not in the uh, the category of a Dick Cotite as a pass receiver but uh, uh, that's just the way it went and of course Richie as, who was who at the time lived with Dick Cotite uh, we had to let him know uh, our feelings about breaking the record after the game. Right. <laughs> the, co the record was co-tights, was the nine, eight or nine, and Jack caught ten that day. It was a great day. And we want to wrap this up uh, by uh, Jack is going to show you a new addition to his family. Uh, the last time I think we talked, uh, the, the, the grandchild was on his way. This is a little bit of an update, Jack, and uh, yeah, this is, tell us a little bit about her. This is the light of my life, okay. uh, Caitlin Rose Casey. She's going to be a year old soon, and uh, for all the grandparents out there, I mean, I can't believe it's 30 years that we since I played on this field, but uh, life has a way of uh, kind of um, bringing good things at different times, and, and, and this certainly is, is, is the best thing that's there, happened Jack. in a long time. Okay, there's Caitlin. There's Caitlin Rose Casey, the light of my life. Okay, Jack, thank you very much. Enjoy homecoming game, yeah. and we'll see you during the basketball season. It's a great day, and, and, and thank God the weather changed. We've had some tough ones up here the last few years, and uh, but it looks like it's going to be a great day. Okay, thank you, Jack. We'll see you for the second half in just a minute. It's time. Time to get noticed. Time to get ahead. Time to increase sales. It's time for your business to be the best it can be. Local television is a great way to get your business recognized. Stay ahead of the competition and reach your target audience to exciting programming like this. It's time to call Staten Island Cable today and join the race to be the best. Cable advertising works. CSU with the lead over Wagner College. It is homecoming. And there you see a shot of, of the, the stands. We had a chance earlier to take a, to go around with one of our cameras and shoot some footage of this new facility. First of all, it's, it's a 3,300-seat stadium. It's got seat-back configurations for 400 reserved seats. Um, the aluminum structure has brick facing along the front and sides of the stadium. And then underneath the stadium, as you see our truck there, underneath the stadium, there's a field house that has team rooms, uh, public facilities, a training room, equipment room, a weight room, and it's all surrounded by a six-lane synthetic running track. This is a beautiful facility, Joe. Well, it's been it's been needed up here, James, for, and it's several th things. Of course, the track uh, is going to do wonders for Wagner's track program. They are a Division I track program, so... This is a big time uh, facility here and uh, good luck to Hamline and his, and his athletic staff when they run their meets here and it'll make a much more attractive school for track athletes in the future. And as far as the stadium goes, uh, we saw the when it was empty, now it's filled with fans and uh, you have a, you know, 400 reserve seats as comfortable as any seat you would find in a, in a big time stadium and uh, a, a modern facility for the press box we're using it for the first time today. Mm -hmm. Much better for the uh, uh, teams that have come to Wagner College, for their coaching staffs. They used to be crammed into a little corner here. Right. And now uh, both coaching staffs can have uh, coaches upstairs and doing a better job. And there's inside it uh, the modern uh, locker room and uh, there's Wagner c players getting ready and loosening up before the game. Uh, a big improvement for Wagner College. and. Uh, 
and we certainly wish them luck here. We just wish they were playing a little bit better football in the second half. Maybe they can get this crowd into it. Uh, the first homecoming game with this new facility. We hope they give us some excitement in the second half. But a great job. And it even even besides the football uh, players having it better, this makes it much better for Wagner's baseball players' yes. games because the football team used to practice in the outfield and chew up the field. Mm -hmm. Now they have their own practice field behind this facility here, and it'll make Richie Vitaliano's baseball team and will be much better off. And, of course, they had the great improvement down the road here with their new soccer field and, uh, and softball facility down at the bottom of Howard Avenue. So Wagner College, tremendous improvement in the 90s for their athletic teams and their athletic program. And they still have their uh, the gymnasium, which is being built. Right. That's going to take, I spoke to Tom Dow today, he said they're looking at approximately 18 months. In the meantime, they are sharing the facilities, the, uh, the College of Staten Island facilities with CSI. And um, we just can't wait until that's done and we can have an opportunity to go in here and do one of our first Wagner College games from inside their new gym. Right. Terry... Terry Small, who is doing the announcing today uh, here at, in the press box, is the CSI athletic director, and he told me CSID. that... CSID. CSID. Uh, I'm sorry, that's right. The giving SID. him a promotion. Yeah, right. Know that, about it. Right. Uh, sorry, Gene Marshall. <laughs> um, giving Terry your job, but uh, Terry said that the Wagner College basketball teams, both men and women, come down to CSI. They'll be practicing from 7 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock, and then Tony Petoza and, and uh, Gene will have their boys and girls teams in the afternoon, as usual. So Wagner will be sharing that facility, and on December 6th... That's right, we'll be there. We'll be there for CSI Wagner basketball. And it's kind of odd because that's actually a Wagner home game in the right. CSI gymnasium. Right. But that's it for right now. We're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we will have the second half of this homecoming game at Wagner College. You are watching Island 16 Sports. Don't go away. Okay, ready for our field trip? To fit the cable in the classroom, it's going to be awesome. It's like 37 different cable networks with all these cool shows to use in class. There are no commercials, and it makes learning a total adventure. Cable in the Classroom is a free service of the cable television industry, and now there's a way for you to help your neighborhood school. Volunteer to record selected programs for teachers to use in class. Okay, now what do we learn here today? Now, Cable in the Classroom comes home. Welcome back to half number two of Island, Island 16's coverage of NEC football. It's 17 to nothing. There you can see on our KC Funeral Home scoreboard, CCSU with the lead. And Joe, we were just talking, and it, we can look down on the field, and we can see backup quarterback Mike Seminaro starting to warm up a little bit. He's taking some snaps, so there may be a quarterback change here in the second quarter, in the second half. I, I think that we're going to see Mike Seminaro at quarterback here when Wagner gets the ball in the third quarter as Walt Hamline goes to his inexperienced kid and try to dig them out of this 17 to nothing hole. Jeff Skinner completed four of 17 passes in the first half, James, and I know Hamline was not happy with his performance, so we may see a change when Wagner gets the ball, but the Seahawks have to kick off to Central Connecticut to start this second half down 17 to nothing. It'll be Taylor and Webb, Webb, who has become Jackie a quick Hawaii. favorite of our uh, of our staff. All of a sudden, they are back deep. Carl Frankie to kick it off. Start half number two. Seventeen to nothing. Central Connecticut has the lead. Wagner trying to get off to a good start, trying to get themselves fired up here for the opening kickoff in the second half. And here we go. It'll be Lewis Webb taking it. Well, maybe not. It's going to go out of bounds. So Wagner not starting off too well. Kick out of bounds is going to give CCSU excellent field position to start it off here in the second quarter. No, second not, half. not a good start for Wagner. And Frankie, who's been kicking the ball very, very well on his punts today, does not get into that one. And uh, Central Connecticut will be starting from the 35-yard line, first and 10. 35-yard line. Well, Keith Tulin, 11 of 18, 145 in the first half. And he actually threw better than that. There were, there were one or two passes that were bad, but for the most part, he was right on the money all court, all half. The 
comeback starts with defense, James. Let's see if the Seahawks can get a three and out and start this comeback. Well, they're going to start off by handing off. Ball ball. Ball is and in. Wagner. That could be Wagner's ball. Oh, it, it looks is, like James. it is. Wagner College starts off, and you talked about it. The defense sets the tone. Matt Burns, number 10, comes up with a big photo recovery. Jay Vanderhoof took the handoff. Had it not loose, Burns came up with the recovery, and this could be just the spark that the Wagner College offense was looking for. And it is true freshman quarterback Mike Seminaro who takes over at QB for the Seahawks. Seminaro is now in at quarterback. He is a freshman. Big test for the young man here. First and 10, deep in Blue Devil territory. He's going to drop the back to pass right away. He's being pressured. Gets away from the tackler, throws down, free. oh, in and out of the hands of Jason Bain. Oh, my goodness. We can hear the Wagner coaching staff from here. That was a very nice play by Seminaro. Showed some athleticism by rolling out of the pocket, getting away from a tackle, and threw a nice pass. Bain just couldn't handle it. Hit him and, right in the hands. And what a big boost it would have been for the, for the whole Wagner team and Seminaro and the crowd and everything else if Bain would have held on. He drops it, second and 10 from the 32. Wagner has their first starting field position inside of Blue Devil territory today. So it'll be second and 10 now. Gave it to Sorrell. Tried to bounce it out to the outside, couldn't do it. Number 50, Ed Zaski was there to put the hit on him. And will make it third down. I would imagine down 17 to nothing, James. I would imagine this is four down territory. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be punting the ball away from the 31-yard line, so if Wagner does not convert this third and nine, I'm sure that Seminaro and company will be going for it on fourth down. Let's see what the freshman can come up with here. They're one for eight on third down conversions today. Cyril is out of the game. Lockhart, the lone setback. Three wide outs. Seminaro back to throw. He's got Justin Abel, and he is going to be stopped face short mask. with a flag down. I think we got a face mask, James. That could give him the first down. He hit Justin Abel. I'll have to wait and see what the call is. This is not a first down without the face mask call at the end that I think is coming. Let's see if we can pick it up on camera here. It's around the head area right there. And... I couldn't get a clear view of the no. face mask, but there was definitely something that happened. Here comes the call. Not a first down. That's still third, third down. Third and about in, third and inches. Third and inches. He's going to roll out to his left. He's, nice block. He's got some running room. He's in the left side. Tries to get a tackle. Take it down inside the 10. By number 42, Brian Clements. Seminaro putting a little spark into this Wagner College team so far that Jeff Skinner could not. Well, the young freshman is trying to put a storyline on a, on this homecoming day by coming in and coming to the rescue. And that time he made a good decision, James. He turned the corner and he didn't hesitate. He turns it up first and goal. Gotta love freshmen that walk right into a game and take over like they belong. That's a beautiful thing for a coach to have. First and 10 inside the 10, first and goal. The pitch out to Cyril. He's going out to the right side, breaks the tackle. He is hit hard by number one, Hector Concepcion. Boy, Cyril ran hard on that play, James. He really got the, as much as he could out of it. Gets it down to the five-yard line, second and goal. Kevin Good, number 28, comes into the game, along with Dennis O'Shaughnessy, a backup tight end. Will, will it be Lockhart up the middle, or would it be, will it be Cyril going wide, or will the young freshman be rolling out with the ball. Let's see what Hamline wants here. Going wishbone style. Three men in the backfield. Give is going to be Cyril. Who did, oh, no, no, it's not. Seminaro on the keeper. <laughs> he who fooled us. Seminaro brings his crowd and his team to life. By keeping Wow. Talk about a big impact from a freshman. Very nice. Mike Seminaro, welcome to the game. 5'11", 160 freshman. And we've got a 17-6 ball game. 
Well, he faked out everybody in the house, including James. <laughs> including me, yes he did. There goes Cyril over the top, and there goes Michael into the end zone. Congratulations, young man. You got your team back in the ball game. Carl Frankie for the extra point now. Pickers up, and it's good. He got a 17-7 ball game. On the keeper for Mike Sermonaro. So what, do you, what does that say about Walt Hamline not having uh, no, question, no question in his mind to bring in a freshman quarterback here at homecoming? Well, again, we saw that he was kind of disappointed and got in Skinner's ear a few times in the first half. I don't know whether it was because uh, maybe Jeffrey was changing some plays at the line of scrimmage or just didn't like the execution and decisions being made. So in comes this true freshman who... By the way, folks, he's here on a uh, double sports scholarship. Richie Vitaliano expects this young man to step right into his starting lineup on the baseball team this spring. And he certainly showed a lot of, a lot of poise. That drive, six plays, 32 yards, 23 total yards from number 14, Mr. Seminaro. Frank, you're going to kick this one deep. Lewis Webb to take it from about the seven-yard line. Finds a wall, tries to get to the outside. Gets away from the tackle. Carl Frankie is there to help bump him out of bounds, along with Otis Bass, the backup defensive back. Another nice return for Lewis Webb, the 5'4, 145 pound Lewis Webb. 28 yard kickoff return for Lewis Webb. Sure, young Mike Seminaro. He's got to be feeling a lot better. Maybe caught a flyzer out of his stomach when he was told at halftime he was going in the game. The perfect start for Wagner in the second half. First and ten, little play action. Nice hit to Grizz. The ball pops loose. But they're going to call it incomplete. Oh. They're going to call it incomplete. Oh, we no. got to see that one again. No, no, no. Jason Schultz was headed for the promised land, but they called it incomplete. Oh, my goodness. That's not a good call. Walt Hamline going absolutely crazy. Walt is furious. And, Walter, you got every right to be furious. Oh That's a my. terrible call. That ball was caught. He took two steps with it. If we have a replay of that, we're going to see that was a reception and a two steps and a fumble. Terrible call. It'll be second and ten now from the 35. Two and straight back to throw. Across the middle. That's that a one's fumble. popped loose again. And again. They oh, my goodness. Two in a row. That's two in a row. Oh, my goodness. Oh, gee. I whiz. cannot believe that. That ball hit Vanderhoof right in the numbers. It looks again like he took two steps, coughed it up, recovered by Wagner, and Walt Hamline's going to blow a gasket. Oh, I can't, I can't oh, believe it. Oh, my goodness. Now, I'll tell you one thing. I don't know how Walter <laughs> didn't get a 15-yard oh penalty. Oh, my goodness. That is unbelievable. I can't believe it. Oh, my goodness. All right, it's third and 10 from the 35 now. Let's try it one more time. They're going to try to pass again. He's rolling out. This time, it is complete. And they're going to call it in <laughs> And Mike Grizz comes up with a big reception for a first down. Oh, my goodness. We're going to see the first play again. Here's the first catch. And Mike Grizz coughed it up. One, two. He had one down. I'm sorry. I thought it was two. It was one. He had one down. Wow. Back to live play. First and ten. They give us the house. He's trying to bounce around to the outside, and he's going nowhere. Going nowhere. Russo was there. Linda was there. Wiley was there. There's a flag in the middle of that pile, James. Darren Plummer was also there to help out on the tackle. Here's the call. That offensive holding. Walt 
Hamline was still in a suit and tie because he had been at the touchdown mm -hmm. induction, and I went over to him, and as I was talking to him, uh, the referee came out and uh, had a list of names, and Walter jokingly said, oh, give me that list. Let me see who I'm going to be yelling at today. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think Walter intended to be doing just that much yelling. First and 20 now for the Blue Devils. They're going to try to stash it oh, again. Burns picks this one up. There yes. is no doubt about this one. That's going to be Wagner Ball. Matt Burns picks up. They try the old Statue of Liberty twice in one game. I haven't seen that in about 15 years. <laughs> We've seen it twice today. The first time it worked, the second time it didn't. Well, Central Connecticut played a near-perfect first half, James, and this is their fourth, I think, their fourth fumble of the first half, second half. This is only the second one that they counted. House never had it. No, House he never, never controlled had it. it at all. So Wagner recovers their third fumble in the last minute, but the first one that counts. And if they can get in the end zone right now, we're going to have a brand new shiny one for you. Yep. First and ten here. Sermonaro, play action. Going deep. He's back to throw. He's going He's long. going for big numbers in the end zone. Oh, he just got him out of bounds. He let him a little bit too much. Chuck Kinsley was there. He made the catch, but he just missed getting one foot in bounds. There's no fear in this freshman's eyes, James. I like it. I like it a lot. And this crowd is energized, and they get the young man's got everybody on his side. But Wagner needs to make something out of this turnover. Kinsley's coming out of the game now. They're going in the I formation. Second and ten. He's going to pitch it out to Cyril, going out to the right side. Tries oh, to get to the corner. Great. Hello. Number 25 was there. That is James Melchiona. Well, Melchiona made a big, big play. It was a great play, but he was the only one out there. Cyril gets around him. It's a big gain. That is a tremendous defensive play by that young man. That's a heck of a tackle right there. It sure is. Cyril comes out to the sidelines. He'll come out of this play. He came out on third and 11. Again, I would think Wagner would go for it on fourth down if they don't convert here. Let's see what Seminaro comes up with. Mark Hart, the, young, the lone setback. Back to throw. There's some pressure. Seminaro steps up. Tries to get away from the tackle. Couldn't do it. There is 42, Brian Clemens. But his fifth sack of the year. Back at the 39 now, maybe with the loss, James. So punt it. And Frankie now will try to pin Central Connecticut deep in their own territory. Justin Abel, by the way, James, was opened over the middle that time, but Seminara didn't have the time, the time to pick him up. And we talked about the, the pass rush that comes from this, from this CCSU defense, and that's the first time that we saw it today. A little pooch punt here by Ka Frankie. Frankie with the high punt. Webb is there, going to let it go. Too long. A little bit too far. It's going to be a touchback first and 10 from the 20-yard line for the Blue Devils. I thought Carl would be able to punch it into the corner there, James, because that's only like an 18-yard pickup. And the big, big turnover on the muffed Statue of Liberty play does not turn into points for Wagner College. So Central Connecticut going to try to settle down a little bit. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Trying to get back to basics in their pro set. Motion from Brown. Play Hands action. up. They're going to hit House on the outside once again. Full head of steam. Big collision. Lewis McMillan was there to put the hat on him. But again, they allowed House to catch the ball and get outside on that same kind of pass pattern, James. And him and Brown are the two big weapons, and you just can't allow Stan House to get outside your flank here. He's got too much speed, and he punishes people that try to tackle him. Ryan Linder was also there to chip in on that tackle. It is a first down from the 35. First and 10. Roll out. Mike Grizz is complete. He's going to be shy of a first down. But a nice reception. Jason Schultz was there on the tackle. And Mike Grizz, after a very quiet first quarter, has come alive in the second quarter and third quarter so far. Give him nine yards under completion. 
second and one. He's got himself a first down, barely. But it is a first down for Central Connecticut. Are they gonna bring, they, they are moving the chains. That is a first down for Central Connecticut. Well, the Wagner defense that got the turnover early in the first half, second half to put them on the board and got another turnover. Gave him a second chance to score. Now needs to stop the Central Connecticut offense right here. He's back to throw. He's going long. He's got Webb broken up at the last second by Lewis McMillan. Very nice. He wanted Lewis Webb. You know, I'm tempted to call him Spud. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta keep that in my mind. Right. He was looking for Lewis Webb down the right sideline. It was broken up nicely by Lewis McMillan. Well, McMillan, I think, has been the best player on the field defensively for, for Wagner today. He's made a couple of outstanding plays, and that time Tulin put it. Uh, that's a touchdown, Jane. That's he a beautiful play. That's a touchdown if McMillan doesn't bat it away, and he did. That's perfect coverage, a great athletic play. And that saved six there because Tulin put it right on the money. Pete Tulin, 15 to 24, 179 on the afternoon so far. They're going to swing it out. That's, that's a lateral. Goes out of bounds. Ball was thrown behind the line, so it was live. It was that a lateral. Was, that was, was a lateral. That is a pass. Right. It was a lateral. And again, we are very close to this Wagner College staff, and they are screaming, saying that House did kick it out of bounds. Which, if he did, is a penalty. And it's not being called. They do lose four or five yards on the play. And again, Stan House can do a lot of things, but he can't catch everything, and that was over his head and to the left. And Wagner's defense putting a little bit more pressure on Tula now when he goes back to pass. They should be sending somebody here. Third down, straight drop. He wants the big guy across the middle. He's got him, he steps out of a tackle. First down and a lot more. Tripped up down the sideline by Derek McCormick, but L.T. Brown oh, that's rumbled a, across There is a, field. what's gonna happen here, James, is we're gonna have, we're going to have a dead ball foul, I think, on Central Connecticut after this unbelievable pass and run, Tulin to Brown. A man among boys. That what a behind cat. Him. Are you kidding me? This kid's got NFL type hands. He's got NFL type size. He can't knock him down. Showed he good makes wheels a big there. play. But we had a penalty behind the play, and I think it's a dead ball personal foul on Central we'll Connecticut. Here. Dead ball, Central Connecticut. Yep. It's going to be first, if I'm, if I'm right. It should be first and 25. It should be a first down at the at the 24-yard line and then a 15-yard penalty going the other way, I believe. It was a dead ball right. foul. And the ball is down to the 24-yard line. It gets moved back to the 39. That's the proper spot. And now, is it first down or is it first and 25? Or is it just first and 10 from the 39? It's going to be first and 10. It's going to be first, and, be 10 first and 10 from the 39. 39-yard line. See, I thought on a dead ball, James, you got the first down right. and then 15 and then yards back, back. So it'd be first, that would have been a break for Wagner, but they don't get that. It's first and 10. LT Brown, five receptions for 78 yards. First and 10 from the Wagner 39. Give is the house. Bounces out to the left side, and he is stuffed up there. Ryan Linder was over there, along with Jamar Johnson for the stop. Boy, they had them back deep third and long James and Tulin goes finds Brown and as you called it finds that, the money man that, but that pass was behind him it was him, behind him and he made us but that's just a great great athletic play by number 88 it'll be second and ten he got back to the line of scrimmage 
Brown jumps out into the slot left. Grizz is in motion. Play action. Incomplete. Look for Mike Grizz across the middle. Ryan Linder was there for the stop. And that's the same play they've been using just to the reverse side. Right. And you know, James, one of the other things I've noticed about the Wagner defensive front today, Tulin throws a very hard, a very hard ball, but it looks like it doesn't get up very high. He mm -hmm. doesn't put but the Wagner uh, rushers are not putting their hands up, and he's getting clear passing lanes to throw through. They haven't tipped one of his passes today, and it looks to me like he's throwing fastballs right over their helmet. Mm -hmm. Get your hands up and do some deflecting of those Play passes. action. Wiley coming in and going to set up a screen out the house. Nice block. Right. And he's knocked down. Excellent job by the Wagner defense, James. Good stop there it's for the Seahawks. going to make it fourth down. They'll have to kick it away. And the Central Connecticut coaching staff is not going to be ha happy with whoever that personal foul call was on. Carrigan back to punt it away. Benitez standing at his own 10. Oh! And it's taken away by number 22. Uh, He's gone! Goodbye, Darius Marshall. They wow. tried to fake Darius Marshall, read it perfectly, and we have a brand new ball game. <laughs> oh, Joe, you know oh, what? Oh, man, you that's, know what? that's I don't, I'm not doing any more games yeah. because I have seen everything in this game. We've seen the Statue of Liberty twice. We've seen a fake punt that was picked off in the air by the guy coming in to block the punt, and then he rumbles for a touchdown. Wow. My goodness. The old shovel pass for six points. Right into his hands. He hit him right in the numbers. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Mr. Marshall, we'll see you six points later. 22 chasing 22. No contest. Oh, my goodness. 65 yards. The extra point is good 17 14 this one is wide open right now oh my goodness <laughs> unbelievable that's an intercepted pass that's, that's got to be an intercepted an pass, intercepted pass. It's, a, it's picked off ryan right. Kerrigan gets an intercepted pass to his credit darius marshall get I, right. I, I i don't i can't even we're, begin to tell right. you where to go from this point on if you're watching yeah. just sit back right. relax and get ready because there's a lot more coming. I can tell you that. What we what we're talking, we're not just fumbling and talking to ourselves here, folks. The question was just As asked on paper are. to me. What was what 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 do we call that? A fumble? It's an intercepted pass because the, the shovel was forward. Marshall stepped in front, so that's a pass interception and another turnover. And there is the Central Connecticut sideline in stunned disbelief. Wagner has 14 points of turnover so far. That's the third turnover for Central Connecticut in the second half. My goodness. Well, let's try it again. <laughs> He's going to kick it off. Hey, we're going to have Webb. James, we're going to have fun this last quarter and a half. This here. one's going to be interesting. And uh, that one's going to go out of bounds. Talk about a momentum drop right there. Gee, where's Paul? You got to put it in play there. So CCSU will take it over at their own 35-yard line. That is the biggest play that we have seen thus far. And there's, there is the man, Darius Marshall. Well, there he was. <laughs> There's Rick Sorrell now. James, he looks like he has no friends there. You think <laughs> yeah. he'd have a little company, right? I think he was throwing a no-hitter and everybody right, wanted to right. stay away from him. Exactly. There he is again, there all by is. himself. Come on, so that's it. Yards. Somebody somebody go over and give the man five. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thomas Tonto with number 51 would have smacked it ahead right there. First and 10 from 35 for the Blue Devils. They're going to swing it out the house once again. This time, number six is there, Jamar Johnson. I think if I was the defensive coordinator for Wagner College, I would say, listen, folks, fellas, don't let me see him run around the corner with a pass <laughs> one more time. If they get to something else, fine, but I don't want House catching a pass That's and right. going 10 yards around the corner. That can be hazardous to the health of some of the defensive backs for Wagner College. Man, does he have great hands for a running back. Jeez. He's got six catches for 53 yards in this game to go along with all the rushing yards that he has. 
second down. He gave us the house, who is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Big play coming up, James. Big, big play. Third down. Darren Plummer, number 56, was there to trip him up. Keith Toulin is going out of the game. Darrell Taylor is going to be in the quarterback now. Well, I would say that they're not going to pass the ball here, right. James. You've got to look it's for an option. Draw or option play. Right. Slash is back in the game. He's got Webb and Grays out to the left. He's going to run an option. He's going to keep it, and he has stopped Tad while he comes through with a big stop. Tad Wiley came flying through with a beautiful stop, and that will force CCSU to give it up one more time as Oliver Benitez is going to go back to receive it. And Chad Wiley in the first half had Wagner a big play on defense. He had a sack on third down, and he gets That's nice. around the ankles, and there was a lot of extracurricular activity going on in the secondary, and Wagner doesn't get a flag, and now a punt to get the ball back, and Big Mo is in Green's corner. Harrigan to kick it away. The line drive punt. Benitez is going to take it from about the 30. Dancing around a little bit. All right. Oh. There's a flag down. And one of the officials. Oh, two flags. One of the officials just throws a big flag. Oh. That's Joseph Vargas, the linebacker. I think Joe Vargas may have seen his last play of the day. I think he just got thrown out of the game, James. And Will Tamline going to have a little chat with him. I don't think Mr. Vargas will be leaving that area anytime soon. I think the Wagner is going to get 30 yards worth of penalties here. There were two flags there. We saw the uh, first one. First one was a, the first one was a clip on the punt return. Second one was a dead ball personal mm -hmm. foul on Vargas. Well, Vargas actually was being roughed up a little bit by the referee. Let's see what we got here. Right there, the clip on the return. No, that's not, that's not right. That was a little defense. Personal foul. No, that was a, he screwed that up because that's on Wagner. It's not on Central Connecticut. I'm sure that he unless, made a mistake. Unless there was a personal foul on CCSU and then he tried to stop Wagner from continuing anything. Yeah, well, Walt Hamline is yelling at the wrong guy. Then. Well, here he comes again. Let's see yeah, he's going to correct here. himself, I believe. That, that you got it. All right, there it is. Wagner is going to be in the shadow of their own goalpost, James. Yes, they are. With 5.04 left in the third, 17-14 ball game. There is Mr. Vargas. They're going to mark the ball at the 10-yard line. First and 10 from their own 10. Sermonaro is in, still in at quarterback. I formation, two receivers out to the left. Bain and Frankie. Play action to Surreal. He's going to roll out. Nice block. Gets a nice block. Looks downfield. Hits Frankie at about the 20 yard line. It's going to be a first down. Oh, wait. They, well, no, no. They may have given him a bad spot. It's going to be short of the first down. They're going to spot that just inside the 20, so it will not be a first down. It's going to be second down. But a nice job by Seminaro getting out of trouble, and Brian Avery threw a very nice block just as the pressure was about to come from behind. Avery freed Seminaro for the pass, and he picked up nine. Carl Frankie, three receptions for 40 yards so far. It'll be second and one. Give to Surreal straight up the middle. Bouncing off a tackle. He loads the ball. It's going to be picked up by Concepcion. Now, here's the thing. Was he down? They're not going to call him down. The ball is going to go back the other way. <laughs> so, it looked like Rick Cyril was down when that ball came out. I think that's a close one. I think I'm going to wait. I think I'm going to have to wait to see this again, James. So, let's see. There's Rick. Still up. 
we can keep it going. He spins there. Uh, that's a little tough. That's if we could close. back that up and do it a little slower at the point close. of contact, that was a tough angle. Either way, it's going to be the Central Connecticut ball. That's the real second fumble of the day. Poolin back to throw, finds no one. There was a mix up there. House was going one way, Webb was going another, and Tulin threw it right between the two of them. It's going to be second in time. We're down to 420 to go here in a very entertaining third quarter. Tulin is 18 of 29 for 226 yards today. We're looking at a 300 plus game. That, you know, all right, that's enough shots of Marty Manheimer. That's two for him today. <laughs> second and 10. Back to throw. He's going down the field. Picked off by number six, Jamar Johnson. He's got some running room. He gets a nice block there, tries to get up the sideline. And Ooh. House levels him out of bounds. Stan House. Oh, my goodness. Stan said, I think i got to play a little defense now. 21 yards on the return for the Jamar Johnson interception. What a hit by <laughs> Stan House. Oh, my goodness. Stan House wants to play linebacker when he's not running with the football. But first of all, Johnson makes a fabulous interception. This is perfect deep coverage. He turns to the ball. He eludes the tackle on the goal line. But, folks, watch what happens at the end of this run. This is Stan House. Watch this hit. Now, this is why I stopped playing football right there. Oh. I'll stick to baseball. First and ten, fourth turnover in the third quarter. They give us the lock card up the middle. Still on his feet. They're trying to strip the ball out. You can see number 42 right there. Brian Clemens going after the ball, trying to pull it loose. As it seems like everyone has a little bit of fumbleitis today. Well, it's exciting, though. We've had a lot of turnovers in this game, James, and we have probably should have had a couple more because those two that they didn't call on what would look to us like pass receptions by Central Connecticut. This is turning into a typical CCSU now we Wagner got it right. game. Now we got That's it right. right. 17 to nothing. That wasn't it. That's not what we were looking for. Nope. This close one is what we needed here. It'll be second down, second and nine. They're going to go with play action. He's got some time. Oh, in and out of the hands of Lockhart. Oh, he threw it right there. He man. had him right in his hands, oh, hit him man. in stride. Yep. Right through his hands. It'll be third and nine now. Well, you can see that Seminara uh, James has shortstop-like athletic ability. He's got quicker feet. He's a little bit smaller than Jeff Skinner, but he's got a lot of mobility. He threw that one real nice on the run, but he, again, Wagner faces third and eight in their own 35 as we tick down towards the end of the third quarter. Seminaro, two of five for 13 yards. He's gonna roll out the pass again, gets a nice block. He's got some time. He's gonna go back across the middle of the field and it is complete to number 84, Chuck Kinsley. There's a lot of extracurricular activity going on in this game so far. James, what we got ourselves right now is a nasty little brawl this going is, on in this, this field. Is, this is by far, you know, we, we, we hinted on this a little bit earlier that this may be becoming a rivalry. There's right. no doubt about it. As of this point, look at your time, look at the clock right now. This is officially a rivalry at this point in time in the NEC, and it's going to be a good one for years to come. First and ten. In the I formation. Seminaro, quick drop. And he's got Frankie at about the 50-yard line. He'll mark it at midfield. Frankie made a nice adjustment going back to that ball. He was behind him also. Yeah, that time Seminaro slipped on his setup, James. His back foot slipped from under him, and then Frankie made a nice adjustment. And again, it's not much, but it's about four or five yards rather than an incomplete pass, and they move past midfield. And remember, Frankie, call Frankie, the Wagner kicker, does have 45 to 50 yard range on field goals. Second and six, hand off to Cyril, who heads straight up the middle following his blockers. Gonna be close to the 45. Gonna be third gonna, and one. They're gonna mark it at the 45 yard line. They'll make it third and one. It's 157 left to play in the third quarter. 17-14 is our score. Blue Devils with the lead. 
Wishbone set. They're going back into the wishbone. Seminaro better watch his back. And he is tripped up nicely. Damian Baker came from the back side to trip him up. Decision time for Walt Hamlin, James. Fourth and one from the 45. What do you do? Uh-oh. I don't think the fans are going to like this. I think Walt is going to punt. Well, it looks like he's going to kick it away. Yes, he is. Mm. Fourth and one, folks. Fourth and one. He called it no gain. I'd look out. I'd look for the fake here. Maybe a little fake punt here. Webb and Taylor are back deep again. Oh, he, he hesitated. I thought he was going to run with that one. He could have, James. Webb is going to catch that one in the end zone. What's he doing? He's going to bring it out. What is he doing? Are you kidding? And, and what's the flag for? If it stands, it'll be a five-yard return. Man, we got some wacky stuff this going on this football game. <laughs> James, the, the Central Connecticut defensive front just peeled back that time. Frankie could have ran right up yeah. the middle, and there was nobody there. And, there you know, he, has, no he did one. a little stutter step. There was no I thought he was going to take off with it for a minute. And then Webb catches the ball two yards in the end zone and runs it out, and Wagner and that's gonna gets be a called personal for a personal foul. foul. Right. Oh, that is huge. We're going to take another look at that. Now well, watch, watch, watch Frankie. There's the no one step. there. He could have run right. There is not a white shirt within 15 yards to call Frankie. And, and Webb, now Webb kind of confused here. Didn't know what he wanted to do. Finally brought it out. Oh, there's the face mask. Yeah, yeah it is the it. yank. First and ten. Back to pass. He's got Brown. Nice tackle. Jamar Johnson is there for the stop. Johnson and McMillan on the corners, James, have played outstanding football today here for Wagner College. Outstanding. And they are both sophomores. A lot of time they're going to be together. Actually, last year they got, they had a lot of play time together, mm -hmm. and it increased this year. They're both starting, and it's just going to get better and better as these guys get older. Hand off the house. Stopped. That's and finally taken down. That will be the last play of the third quarter. Eight seconds left to play in the third. They're going to let the clock run out. That is the end of our third quarter. 17-14 is the score. Do not go anywhere. One more quarter left to play. We'll be right back with quarter number four on Island 16 in just a moment. the same old same old sure you're talking about the elm park inn where we serve the same old delicious food you've grown to love yeah stuffed pork chops and the same old service that makes you come back for more hey! with two floors of remodeled dining area expanded for parties up to 55 so bring the family or some friends but chances are they'll already be here hey! the elm park inn dinner for tonight and tomorrow Welcome back to Fisher Field. We are beginning the fourth quarter. I just got a stat from my, my chief stat man, Dave Pizzuto, that in the in the second half, Stan House has rushed five times for one yard and a fumble. So the Wagner defense has come up big here in the second half, stuffing Mr. House. Central Connecticut, one out of ten on third down conversion so far in this game. And here's another big one coming up to start the fourth quarter. Third and two from the 26. Tulin going to roll out, looking to throw on the run. It's tipped. Oh, my goodness. He and Mike the Riz ball. still caught it. The ball was tipped. You called it right, it James. It was tipped at the line. Couldn't see who was there. It might have been Chad Wiley who tipped it. But the ball was tipped at the line, and Mike Grizz made a very nice adjustment to make the catch. And what a big play, kid. Instead of a punt, Central Connecticut keeps the football, and that's because of Tulin's great arm. He throws the ball with such velocity that the tip didn't uh, have anything to do with the direction it was going in, and the Blue Devils keep control of the football. Play action. Big hit, and he held on to it. 
Jamar Johnson absolutely leveled the big man, LT Brown. He juggled it and held on to it. This is great stuff. Jamar Johnson's having some second half. Oh man. my goodness. And this guy Brown, man, he can play for my football team. Wow. That was a big play. Seven receptions, 89 yards for LT Brown today. Second down and five. They're gonna go outside to Mr. Brown again along the sidelines. He's got himself another first down. Schultz was there to bump him out along with Darren Plummer. James, they have announced the crowd today at 3,335 for homecoming at Wagner College. It's a sellout. And everyone here and everyone watching Island 16 is getting their money's worth. We have an excellent ball game today. It'll be first and ten. They're going to give it to House. Big hole up the middle. Great steps out of a tackle from Johnson. Gets down the sideline, and he's finally run out of bounds. State but House to put up a huge carrier. game. Darren Plummer was there with Darius Marshall to bump him out of bounds. He stepped out of Johnson's tackle and rumbled out to the sideline. Well, State House has been very, very quiet here in the second half. James, but here the inside handoff, there's the missed tackle, and now House goes rumbling down the field. Uh, his big play in the second half was his hit on the interception until that play. Mm -hmm. He's back in the mix now. Watch him in the passes now. Watch him in the flat. First and 10. Play action. They're going to swing it out the house. Hit him right in the helmet, it looked like. Either shoulder pad or the helmet. That was another lateral, too. That was behind him. He was definitely not expecting that bullet, no. bullet to the head. Not at all. Not at all. He even turned around as if to say, what are you doing? Right. You, you know what makes me laugh about Central Connecticut's offense? Every time House runs for like 20, 25 yards, they don't give him a rest. They no. throw the ball back to him <laughs> the next it. play like he's Superman. That's it. Run him ragged. <laughs> when Cyril runs for 25 or 30 yards, Howling gets take him out of the game. They take him out. The house gets the out. ball the next play. <laughs> It'll be second down. to throw. He's going deep downfield. Almost picked off. Jason Schultz had it in his hands. He was looking for his big tight end LT Brown again, but Schultz stepped in front nicely. LT was LT was rolling deep that time. There's Johnson. That's a big boy. Whispering sweet nothings in his ear. <laughs> They've had a lot of fun out there today. Those There's two. a lot of chatter going out there on yep. the field right now. A lot of chatter going on. Oh, this is a football game. This is a real tough game here. Third down. Big play here for Wagner College. Play action again the house. They're going to set up a screen. Oh, it's a good house gets a nice block. There's a flag down, and that could be on Mr. Brown. I believe that is going to be a flag on LT Brown. And it's a good thing because that was a first down. Central Connecticut did pick up the first down. I believe they did anyway. Oh, it's going to be holding. But it's also fourth down. So what's Walt going to do? Fourth and two or move him back? He's got to move him back, I think. You'd have to. You've got to move him back at this point. But when we've tried to read Coach Hamline's mind before, we've been wrong. So you never know. Third down is going to move him back. And we'll be naming our ESPN, Staten Island Cable, player of the game later on. The Wagner College has their own individual committees to name the Rob, uh, Rob Trophy winner and the Nick Lear Trophy winner for the outstanding offensive and defensive players of the game. We name one. And right now, it could be a lot of people. Play action. He's going to go down the field. Picked off! That's number 11, Lewis McMillan. He's off to the races. They're not going to get him. Lewis McMillan for the touchdown. Hello. 64 yards on the interception return by Lewis McMillan. My goodness. Folks, Wagner's winning. 20 to 17, and they've done it with two spectacular defensive plays. 20 unanswered points. Let's take another look at this interception. 
Tulin uh, tries to throw the big arm, he try, but he throws a little bit flat-footed, James. He doesn't get much on it. That's a wounded duck. Mm -hmm. See? He's been throwing fastballs all day. He slipped. McMillan picks it off. Goodbye. He's played great all day. Him and Johnson on the other corner. And goodbye, Mr. McMillan. And goodbye, Central Connecticut. 17-point lead. The extra point is up and good. 21-17. 21 unanswered points here in the second half for this for this Wagner College team. That is the fifth turnover of the second half, sixth of the game. Yep. Wagner has all 21 points off the turnover so far. 21-17. No, we, we thought we had the play of the game on that uh, fake punt, lateral interception, whatever that was, but now we got another special play to think of. McMillan makes it 21-17, Wagner. My goodness. I don't think I can take much more of this. There he is. The hero of the moment, McMillan, sitting next to his teammates, getting a hug. They have played an excellent game, that secondary of Wagner College. James, I gotta, I gotta tell you what I've noticed something. We've had two spectacular, one by Marshall and one by McMillan. You notice how the Wagner College players all stayed away. Mm -hmm. There's that celebration penalty that they call for 15 yards. Right. Walt Hamline's got his players very well trained to not do, doing any dancing or celebrating in the end zone after touchdowns because if they anybody deserved to dance, it was Marshall <laughs> and McMillan. Frankie to kick it off. It's going to be number five, Lewis your, Webb. Here comes your man, Spud. Ooh. He's hit down hard at the 20-yard line. Give him a return of 17 yards. CCSU going to try to gear it up one more time with 13.09 left to play in this game. Well, now it's up to the Central Connecticut offense to stop turning the ball over and drive the field to put themselves back on top. And this Wagner defensive unit, spectacular. Doing an excellent job today. Wagner gonna burn a timeout here. They were not together on defense. They only had 10 guys on the field. And I think it was Ryan Linda that noticed that there was a player missing. Number 52, Matthew Holland just ran into the game along with number 29, Otis Bass, and now they have 12 men on the field. They went from 10 to 12. Either way, it's not too good. Well, coming up on Wednesday, the 22nd, we, uh, I had an opportunity to go up to Bristol, Connecticut to interview Rich Eisen, one of the Sports Center anchors. And on uh, 8 o'clock, Wednesday, October 22nd, we're going to air that interview. It was a lot of fun going up there. Did it on the set of Sports Center, And he even had a few things to say about you, Joe. Did he really? Yes, I, he I did. I understand that you looked very comfortable on that set up there, James. We'll have to see. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> we'll have to check it you out. You looked right at home, I understand. Hey, listen, I'm sending okay. in my resume real Atta tomorrow. Atta boy. First and go. ten. Doolin back to throw. He's looking deep downfield. He's got the big man just out of reach. There's a flag down on the play. Back at the line of scrimmage. And CCSU's clapping. Looks like it's going to go against Wagner. I think they're going to get the hands to the face on Wagner College here. Some sort of personal foul on the green. Face mask. Personal foul. Here's Grant Hamlin. Whose blood pressure has gone up a few times today. But now he feels a lot better than he did about 45 minutes ago. Oh, when he definitely. Came on the field at halftime, trailing 17 to nothing, feeling a lot better about things right now. I would say so. First and 10 from the 35. Tulin barking out the signals. They're going to give up the middle of the house for a very short game. Well, it's second down. Bagnasco was there for the stop along with Ryan Linder. House pounds the middle for only one or two as Wagner continues to contain him up the middle. They've done a good job all day, James. It's in the flanks that he's hurt them. Call it second down. Yeah, 
action. Turn around. I, I, I don't know exactly what was going on there. Looks like he was no. trying to hit Doug Bost. Let's say, let's put it this way. You cannot catch a football with the back of your heel, which is what Tulin hit that time. Bost was running that way, and the ball hit the back of his leg third and eight. And if he could, I'm sure he'd be playing somewhere other than here. 23 of 39 for 250 yards. Keith Tulin is today. Two big wow. interceptions. 39 passes, and we still have 12 minutes to go. Just out of the reach of LT Brown again. It's going to be fourth down. Ryan Linder running step for step with the big guy, and Central Connecticut forced a punt. 12 minutes to go. Wagner will get the ball back with a four point lead. Carrigan to kick it away. Benitez is there, oh. and he was hit early. He was hit way early. That's going to be trouble. They're going to mark that one off. That one wasn't even close. That's going to put Wagner in great field position, James. They're going to be at about the 50-yard line to start this drive with a four-point lead. If they can march the field now and score again, they're going to be in great shape. But this is a penalty. He had no room to catch that one. Waiting for the call here. Here's, we're going to see Benitez. That's interference. Benitez tried to settle under this punt. And unfortunately, the, we did not get a real clear view of that, but Benitez had no room. 15-yard penalty. Wagner starts at the 47-yard line, first and 10. First and 10 for Wagner College. Motion from Bain from right to left. Pitch out to Cyril going left. Cuts it back across the middle. Looks like he got back to the line of scrimmage. Very quiet day for the Wagner College outstanding running back. He's been contained very well by the Central Connecticut defense. Hasn't really broke one the whole day. 17 carries for 58 yards on the day, Mr. Cyril. Uh, he will come out of the game along with Carl Frankie. It's only a little over three yards a carry for this great back. Marshall, is that Marshall in there for him? Can't see the number right there. It's going to be play action. Samaro in trouble, dances away, gets a nice block, looking for a block there, gets another one. He's got one man to beat, and he's taken down after a nice game. Number 25, James Melciona was there, but Sermonaro comes in and ignites this team like I have not seen them play in a long time, Joe. Well, the defensive unit has scored two touchdowns, but Mike Seminaro has certainly done his job replacing Skinner here. 27-yard run for Sermonaro. Whack. Wagner College ends up winning this football game. Seminaro may be the new starting quarterback up here in the hill. There's the skirts around right end for 27 yards and a first down. Back in the eye formation, Lockhart and Cyril. Straight drop. Oh, that's nice pass outside. Chuck Kinsley is there. So that's the kind of play that was lacking in the first half, James. That's the play that Skinner did not execute. The comeback pattern, nine yards, keeps the clock running. And Wagner looking for the touchdown that will put him up by more than one score. Clock stops at 10.55 on the out of bounds. Play clock at 14, plenty of time. Second down. Surreal, nice hole up the middle. Fumble! He it looks like he recovered his own fumble. Ricky, 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 got a hold on to the football, son. That's fumble number three today for Rick Cyril. The usually sure-handed Rick Cyril with his third fumble of the game. It's, it's a first down. That was almost disastrous for Wagner College. But on the replay, you're going to see it looked like Cyril was on his way to a really good gain and maybe the end zone when all of a sudden, boom, there goes a helmet on the ball and a fumble, but he 
alertly pounces on it. James Marciona knocked it loose, put a hat on the ball. First and 10. They're gonna give it to Surreal one more time, going out to the left side. Gets a nice block there from Lockhart. Picks up a nice little chunk of yards. Nice job, nice job on a cutback. He picked up about seven on first down, James. Lockhart threw a nice block out there for him to open up the path a little bit. It's gonna be second and three now. We're under 10 minutes to play in this game. 21-17, Seahawks with the lead. Back in the eye formation. And off to Sorrell. He's going to try to bounce to the outside. Steps out of a tackle. Headed for the end zone. Touchdown. Rick, Rick Sorrell fights his way into the end zone. Eric Robinson, number 92, had a hold of him and couldn't quite bring him down. Rick Sorrell scampers in for six more points for these Wagner Seahawks. Well, it's been a quiet day for the All-American candidate and Wagner's leading Russia, but that was a very tough seven yards, and you're going to see what the good ones can do when they smell the goal line and when they smell the end zone. Cyril bounces to the outside, gets hit here, gets hit there, and makes it to the corner, and Wagner leads 27-17 with 9.41 to go in the fourth quarter. That being his 20th carry of the afternoon, 75 yards, and his first touchdown of the day. What's going on here? It looks like there was a flag at the end of that play. That'll be a celebration flag. Unsportsmanlike. You gotta back him up. Oh boy. We were just talking about the celebration. Didn't look like much of a celebration to me. I was just giving Walt Hamline a lot of credit for the way his kids behave. They know the rule, and I didn't see much celebrating there. These refs are really getting picky about that. Frankie has to make a 35 yard extra point, James. 27-17. Kick is up, and it's good. Carl Frankie bangs one home. Just your run-of-the-mill 35-yard one-pointer. And he had that easy. 28-17 is our score. The Seahawks come roaring back here in the second half. And another flag on the, on the field. I think it's against Central Connecticut late. Wagner's going to kick off from about the 50-yard line, James, because that 15-yard <laughs> penalty yeah. came after the extra point. Mm -hmm. 9.41 left to play in this game. Frank, you're going to kick it off. Yeah, he's going to kick it off from the 50-yard line with the 15-yard penalty. And there is Rick Sorrell, 20 carries, 75 yards, and a touchdown. Not a big day by Rick's standards, but he just scored a very important touchdown. And we have a big, big discussion going on on the far sideline. The Central Connecticut coaching staff is not happy with the calls that have been going on and uh, them being making it known right now to this officiating crew. Well, they got a couple of breaks early, like we said, with those fumbles oh, that, uh, we, that we called fumbles. They look like fumbles. They, they were fumbles, plain and simple, that were not called. Coach having a lot to say. South Petrona in his sixth season. Yeah, Catrona has been in their ear for the last couple of minutes, and I, I guess he's had his say. And Frankie kicks off. Central Connecticut now in a, down by 11. 28 from points. the 50. Almost went through the upright. It's through the end zone. It's going to be a touchback. First and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Blue Devil ball. 9.35 left to play. Mm -hmm. 
So right now, if you're CCS, CCSU, what do you what do you do, Joe? Well, Brown and House have been the two big guns all day long, and then I think you got to have Webb in that occasion too because he's capable of a big play. He's got Grays wide open. It's going to be a foot race to the end zone. He's got two men to get there, and they both get there in time to knock him out. Darius Marshall was there. Number 29, Otis Bass was also there to run him down. Uh, throw Mike Grizz into that equation, too. Because, <laughs> right, <laughs> we didn't mention him, but he just made like a, what's that, about a 60-yard play? Mike Grizz coming alive here in the second half. This is a replay of uh, an offensive pass and a catch and run by Grizz that's going to put Central Connecticut right back in position to get in this game again. Well, they, they marked the ball at the 25-yard line, James. It looked like he went further than that. It looked like he went out at about the 20. Grizz, four receptions, 100 yards. Pass play out the house in the flats, and he is stopped by Jamar Johnson. It isn't taking Central Connecticut long to get back into scoring position. This one's far from over, folks. Definitely. Remember last year, 49 to 42 Central Connecticut. The year before that, 40 to 35 Wagner College. We could have a lot of points put up before this one's over. Just under nine minutes left to play. Plenty of scoring time left for both teams. Two and under center. Takes the snap. Inside hand off the house and he stopped immediately. Darius Marshall was there to put the hit on him. Darius Marshall on the bottom, Ryan Linder on the top, third and three. From the 17. They mark him down for no gain. Give it to House again. Now, is it a first down? It's That's gonna. It's close to it. it, it we got to see where they mark this. It's like this is like measurement time here, James. Yeah, they're gonna bring in the chains. First time today, the chain gang has come on the field. See what we got here. Comes the measurement. First down by, by the, the nose of the ball. That's right. That's going to be a first and ten. Eight oh five left to play in this game. Twenty-eight seventeen. See how. Devils back in the first set. Who's out left? Webb out to the right. Back to pass. Right across the middle is going for Vanderhoof, who is close to the goal line. He's definitely got a first down. It's going to be first and goal for Central Connecticut. Vanderhoof reminds me of Moose Johnson of the Dallas yeah. Cowboys. He sort of does nothing, and then every once in a while they give him the ball, and he can catch the ball, and now they're right on the goal line, and we got another new ball game if House gets into the house, and, and he House does. And walks into the end zone. Just and like this that. this one is not over by a long shot. Third touchdown of the day who makes a living scoring against Wagner College. That's eight the last two seasons for that young man. 28-23, left to play. Got to go for two here, James. Got to cut five down to three. Mm -hmm. Two point play is the play, and big play gonna, coming up. That's exactly what they're gonna do. Taylor is in at quarterback with Vanderhoek and House in the backfield. Webb out to the right, Grizz out to the left. Taylor takes the snap, the pitch out the house, it's a sprint to the end zone, oh. and Ryan Linder comes up with a huge stop for Wagner College. 
What a great defensive play by Ryan. I am the leader of this team, Linda. It was a race to the pin, and Ryan Linder got there first. House, 22 carries, 98 yards, three touchdowns today. And then we got to get his receptions in there for total yardage. Got to be way over 150. That was a play and a half by Ryan Linder. 28-23, 7.30 to go. He had eight receptions. He's got 160 total yards in a day, does Mr. House. Yep. 28 to 23, 7.30 left to play. And this is what we said would, would happen. It didn't look like it was going to be an offensive, high-scoring shootout for a long time, but thanks to the great Wagner defensive unit and some very strange plays here in the second half, we're up where we thought we would be. 28-23, 7.30 to go, and you know what, James? I don't think it's going to end 28-23. I think we've got more <laughs> scoring to go before this one's over. Wilkinson to kick it off. That's a, that's a bad kick. It's going to be picked up. It's live. It finally goes out of bounds. It looked like he was just going to hang for a while. And there were more flags down. Extracurricular activity. Number 18, James Fury looked like he got tangled up with someone. And that's the area that the flag was thrown in. James, if this were hockey, we would say this is a very chippy game. That would be, that you know, but it's not. It's a, it's a football game, and this has been a nasty, penalty filled, a lot of personal fouls, a lot of hits after the whistle, and I think we got another one coming up that's going to give Wagner the ball from the 35 and 15 more, puts it in midfield. Pick out of bounds here. Got that? Right. He's a 35-yard line, taking 15-yard foul. Let me have that. Let me have that. Let me have that. Out of bounds to the 35, penalty 15 to the 50. And you know what, James? I think that Seminara has had the ball every time he's come on the field in yeah. the second half mm -hmm. in Central Connecticut That's right. territory. That's right. Which is another reason why he's felt very comfortable back there. I would say uh, so. That's a pretty good reason to feel comfortable. Also personal foul is the best Central Connecticut. So it'll be first and 10 for midfield. Sonaro at quarterback. Lockhart and Cyril in the backfield. Play action, rolling out. Gets a block. He's going down He's the field. Him. He's got Frankie open. Oh, in and out of the hands. Oh, my goodness. No. You know, Carl Frankie is a, he's a wide receiver, a punter, and a kicker. And on that play, he looked like a punter. Oh. Right in the hands. Wow. Oh, Lord. My <laughs> goodness. I mean, how good was this pass? This kid's throwing the ball from the 45-yard line, and he is hitting Frankie right in the hands at the five. He that threw was the ball six easily. He threw it 50 yards and hit him right in the hands. Make it second and ten from midfield now. Oh, call. Up the middle of Cyril. Small game. Boy, Rick Cyril has worked for every one of his 77 or 78 that's, yards that's on the ground today. That's a three-yard game. 78 yards total today for Rick Cyril. Well, I hope we're not looking back at the end of this game, James, and remembering that call Frankie dropped because that was six. 6.49 left to play in this game. Play clock down to 10. Third and seven. Back to throw. He's got some pressure. Tries to step out of it, and there is Eric Robinson for sack number eight on the season. He leads CCSU in sacks. 6'2", 270 junior. Well, Seminaro that time ran out of time and get sacked, but uh, got to remember that they should have never been in this third and long situation to begin with. His Lockhart throwing a nice block, and there's Seminaro looking to scramble out of trouble, but 90, number 92 ends that journey. Frankie back to punt now. Webb and Taylor back deep. Oh, 
It'll be Webb. Studenval is there to wrap him up nicely. Number 30, John Steubenval comes through. 37-yard punt. They're going to give him minus five on the return. James, when Wagner College and their coaching staff look at this tape, they will see that every time Frankie punts, the defensive line for Central release. Connecticut releases and peels back, and Carl Frankie could run forever if they decide to fake a punt. Doug Bose now in the backfield along with House. Two on the throw. Quick hit out to Brown. It'll be second and second and six, it looks like. 81 yards away because they failed on the two-point conversion and a great play by Ryan Linda. Central Connecticut has to score a touchdown. A field goal is out there. There's a sack. Mike Bagnasco comes flying through. Keith Tolan goes down. Mike Bagnasco came flying through. 6'1", 225 senior came right up the gut for the sack. Bagnasco, we haven't called his number much today, but in a big spot, beats his man to the inside, gets the big sack. He Third. just threw Jason Cushman aside, went straight in for the sack. Third and 10. Spin out to the left, throw it on a run, incomplete. Jason Schultz was there, he was trying to get Mike Grizz, incomplete, they'll have to kick it away with 4.57 left to play in this game. Good job again by the Wagner defense. It's been spectacular here in the second half. 45. 45 attempts for 329 yards. But no touchdowns and two interceptions. And before this one's over, if Central Connecticut gets the ball back, they'll be throwing the ball 50 times. The school record, the CCSU school record for attempts in a game is 49. If they get the ball back, there's a bad snap. He was able to get it away. They've got to get away from it. Well, Wagner's got it at the 18-yard line. Bad snap. Kerrigan did, a, did an excellent job just to get a hold of it and kick it away. Marshall was breathing down his neck. Take another look at this. Snap bounces. And once the ball hits the ground and the punter starts to scramble, it's, he's open game, he can be hit when he kicks it, and he was hit, the ball went straight up in the air, hits it about the 20, right there at the 21, bounces backwards, Wagner already in field goal range, a touchdown would wrap this one up. That's the equivalent of a 40 foot curveball. They're gonna give to Cyril, who tries to go off the left side, and he stopped. Number 51, Michael Hyatt was there on the tackle. Four and a half minutes left to play. 28-23. Wagner has the lead. Driving deep in Blue Devil territory. Paul Frank will now come out of the game. Bain out right. Kinsley out to the left. Lockhart and Cyril in the backfield. The pitch is going to be to Cyril, who's getting some nice blocks. And he is taken down inside the 15. Dan Brisson, number 49, and number 42, Brian Clements, were there to combine on the tackle. Wagner looking at third and five. If they do not convert, they're well within Frankie's range. A field goal would put them up eight, James, but that would keep Central Connecticut mm -hmm. alive. Yes, it would. They the way that we've seen Tulin throw the ball, right. like we said, he's only three passes away from tying the school record for attempts in a game. Hamline wants a touchdown. He wants to put this one away. Go down, Seminara back to throw. He's being pressured, Robinson in his face. He's turning up the grab. Frankie in the end zone, touchdown! Frankie! 
Carl Frankie redeems himself. That's exactly right. The reception in the sweet. end zone. And I think you are looking at a new star up here on Grimes Hill, Mike Sermonaro. Remember the name, freshman quarterback, and expect a lot of big things from this young man coming up in the future. James replay. Sermonaro was going to hit Frankie right here, but Frankie was covered. He then enrolled right. Frankie made the adjustment, went downfield after a comeback, beat his man, and this time he catches the ball. He doesn't drop it, and this time Wagner with less than four minutes to go, is up by two scores. Frankie for the extra point. Frankie has five receptions, 59 yards, and a touchdown today. And another extra point to his day. It is 35 to 23. Wait a minute. No good. Is that no good? This ain't no good. I guess Paul was so excited about his touchdown that he forgot to concentrate on I think I was game. too excited. I think I called it early. The extra point was no good at 34-23. Mike Seminaro, 6 of 10 for 53 yards and a touchdown, all here in the second half when he came in to replace starting quarterback Jeff Skinner, who was ineffective in the first half for Wagner. 320 left on the clock, 34-23 Seahawks. They would never believe that in the first half, they did nothing offensively and were trailing 17 to nothing. 34 second half points for Wagner College. There's our scoreboard with 320 left to play, 34-23. Frankie kicks it off. Lewis Webb, busy man today. He'll take it for about a six. They're gonna give it to Taylor on a reverse. Taylor heads up the right sideline, jumps over the pile, Studenval hit him. Good job by Wagner, they stayed home. And then number 52, Matthew Holland was there to put him away. It'll be first and 10 now. Back to passes to Lynn. Number 56, Darren Plummer was there, was knocked away. It'll be second and ten now. It'll be second and ten. He's going deep downfield. Mike Graves with a tough reception in Wagner territory. Well, Central Connecticut is not packing their bags yet. Two fifty-nine to go. Grizz, who's been a big offensive weapon in the second half, makes another big catch. They rush up to the line of scrimmage. Another quick hit. This time he's got LT Brown. And so far in this game, LT Brown. To this point in this game, Keith Tulin has set new records for attempts and yards and completions. He's got it all. They're his records today. And that ball is knocked down by Darius Marshall. But as very often happens in a game where a quarterback throws over 50 passes, James, his team is losing the football game. That's what he has to pass every down now. Gee, I'm, I'm wondering how these big time programs here in the East miss this, miss this Brown kick. I mean, you tell me he can't play uh, big time Division One football? Brown, 10 receptions, 108 yards today. 2.32 left to play. They're going to give it up the middle to House. He's got a first down. That'll stop the clock as they move the chains. It is a first down. Stop made by Darren Plummer. 34-23. Three yards on the carry. House, 23 rushes, 100 yards, three touchdowns on the day. And we're not done yet. 
McClellan back to throw. Dumps it off the house. Who gets a nice block there. He's got one man to beat, and it's a nice tackle by Johnson inside the 20. Here they come. Right back This one down is the field. far from over. 49 attempts, passing attempts today from Keith Tulin. That is a new CCSU single game record. Number 50 coming up. Here comes attempt number 50. Oh, Mr. Right, there was a, a mix up there with him and Mike Grizz. Mike Grizz did an out. It looked like he threw an up. Down by 11 with two minutes exactly to play. If Central Connecticut does score, they will go for two points and could cut this down to three. It'll be second down. Two of them back to throw. He's got a slant. Oh, no, he's picked off. He hit number six, Daryl Taylor, right in the hands. It was broken up and almost taken back the other way. But James, it wouldn't have counted because there's a face mask call on Wagner. against Wagner against the quarterback. First down at the 10. Man, they're gonna they're gonna make Wagner and Hamline sweat for everything they get today. This one is far from over. Now they're only gonna call it a five yarder, James, and it's gonna be second and five from the 15 yard line. I'm going to tee it up one more time. Back to throw. Swings it out to Vanderhoof. Matt Burns is there. Put an end to that. Vanderhoof would be better off not catching that one. Mm -hmm. Third down. Two on back throw again. He's going in the end zone. Two, well, not in the end zone. It was too high to Mike Grizz at about the 10 yard line. That will bring up fourth down with 1.30 left to play. No, the game will be over if Wagner holes on this play, James. It's either going to go right down to the wire or Wagner can end the drama right now and this crowd of over 3,000 is rumbling the new stands here at Fisher Field. The Wagner faithful getting behind their defense. Fourth down. This could be the final hope for the Blue Devils. Tulin back to throw. Picked off! That'll do it. Picked off by who else? Number 55. Ryan Linder. Oh, I was wrong. It was Darren Plummer, 56. And that is going to do it. That will do it. Wagner College, 34 unanswered points here in the second half to come away with a victory in what is sure to be an amazing rivalry for years to come with Central and, Connecticut. And could be the dawning of the Mike Seminara era here at Wagner College, definitely. a true freshman mm -hmm. who has definitely won the quarterback job and will be starting next week, I'm sure, for the, the Seahawks. freshman who's played like a seasoned veteran. And there's Rick Sorrell chewing up yards to keep the clock running. Hector Concepcion was there for the tackle. And the Blue Devils are on, they're conceding. On they're, that, not they're not calling timeout. Time out. We're down to under a minute to play. So Wagner College going to come away with a 34-23 victory. Seminar going to give it to Cyril one more time. Who keeps his legs turning up the middle. Taking down just inside the 40. And Ricky picks up a good 15, 17 yards on his last two carries, James, which is going to put him up right around 100 yards, believe it or not. 
the great ones find a way. He's been under control all day, but he's going to get close to 100. 25 carries, 96 yards so far for Rick Sorrell. But the Wagner has one more play one to more run. Play. This should be a kneel down job. Coach we'll is see. taking off the headsets. This one's just about over. They're going to give it to Cyril one more time. And that is going to do it. They're going to get four yards on that. Or they're going to get know. three. I don't know if they're going to do it three or four. But that is it. Time is out. 34-23. Wagner College comes away with an, a stunning come from behind victory over the Central Connecticut State University Blue Devils. We got to take a time out because... I'm shot right about now. I'm sure you are. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come right back with stats and whatever else we got in just a moment. You're watching Island 16 Sports. It's pizza time at Bradley Pizza in Willowbrook. Eddie and the rest of the family want you to experience their special recipe pizza dough for the crispiest crust on Staten Island. Monday through Thursday, get a large cheese pizza for only $6.95. Bradley Pizza also has Heroes, Rolls, and Dinner Entrees, and Ralph's Ices for dessert. Eat in, take out, or call for free, fast delivery to these locations. Bradley Pizza, try us tonight. Call 983-9191. For the time that you'll need the most strength and support, may we introduce the Harmon Home for Funerals. Family owned since 1937, we've nurtured a reputation of comfort and compassion to families in need. Specializing in pre-planning, our experience is in making your final preparations easier. With a home-like decor, the Harmon Home provides an intimate, soothing atmosphere for you to receive your loved ones. Located on Forest Avenue, the Harmon Home for Funerals will be there in your time of need. For more information, contact Terrence McGinley at 442-5056. In 1886, Richmond County Savings Bank made a promise to bring Staten Islanders mortgages they could afford. Today, we still offer more mortgage options to save you thousands of dollars with low fees and competitive rates. Our mortgage counselors can help you choose the best mortgage so you and your family can live more comfortably. Richmond County helped us with our 30-year fixed rate mortgage. Richmond County Savings Bank is an equal housing lender. Everyone on Staten Island knows the Forest Avenue Strip is the place for fun and great food, and the number one spot on the Strip is Jody's Club Forest. Stop in and enjoy Jody's famous chicken salad for lunch or one of the many beef specialties on a dinner menu any family can afford. There is live entertainment on the weekends, and for those seeking added excitement, Quick Draw can make your night a winning one. Let your hosts, Jody and Mary Haggerty, show you that good people and good food can be found under one roof at Jody's Club Forest. Nansen Park, Staten Island's premier location for corporate picnics, family reunions, and outdoor weddings, has just given their banquet hall a makeover, designed to comfortably hold up to 175 people. A Taste of Honey, the exclusive caterer for Nansen Park, offers customized and affordable menus, including carving stations, pasta bars, and cold appetizer tables, in addition to buffets and dinners. Oh, and don't forget to ask about our less formal room, perfect for small showers and birthday parties. Call today and book your next celebration. A Taste of Honey, the banquet hall at Nansen Park, 9830464. With hard work comes a record of achievement. Whether it's battling on behalf of our youth and our seniors, or securing essential services and a better quality of life, whether it's working to protect our health and well-being, or just simply fighting for respect and the right thing, Councilman John Fusco is there for Staten Island. Councilman John Fusco, he's the one you turn to. Welcome back to Island 16's coverage of NCAA football. There in our Casey Funeral Home scoreboard, 34-23. The Wagner Seahawks come from behind with a victory. And, Joe, there are some homecoming awards that are being given out right now, and you know who these winners are. Rob, the Rob Trophy is given to the outstanding offensive player of the game and freshman quarterback Mike Seminaro, who came off the bench to lead this great second-half comeback, won the Rob Trophy. Those are the happy Seahawks. And senior linebacker Ryan Linder won the Nick Lear trophy as the outstanding defensive player but uh, we have a, we have another choice that we're making 
and uh, the choice we're making is uh, going to the ESPN player of the game is going to come up after we talk about the final statistics. Let's look at the stats if we can. First of all, it, it was an excellent ball game. Rushing yards, 112. Wagner came out with 180. 358 passing yards for Connecticut. If you look at Tulin, he was 30 of 54 for 377 yards. Those are all single game records for CCSU. That's a total of, uh, yeah, that's almost, uh, what, about eight, 750 yards worth of offense, which isn't a surprise. Uh, the turnovers, six turnovers for Central Connecticut. That's why they lost. That's why Look at Wagner the penalty won. yards for Wagner. Twelve penalties for 134 yards. And they, they weren't said, much better with nine for 95. Yeah, Connecticut wasn't exactly a bunch of choir boys. Nine for 95. It was a brawl. It was a nasty game. You said it. It's a rivalry. Wagner survives. 17 nothing hole to win. 34 to 23. Individual numbers for Central Connecticut. House, 20 carries, 94 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, passing, we went over with Tula receiving. LT Brown, 10 receptions, 111 yards. Mike Grizz, 6 receptions for 130. On the other side of the ball, Rick Cyril, 26 carries, 116 yards, and a touchdown. Seminaro, passing, ten, uh, 6 of 10 for 45 yards. Skinner was 4 of 17 for 60. And receiving, Carl Frankie, 5 receptions, 56 yards. And right now we have the play of the game. And Wagner was trailing 17 to 14. Back went Tulin to pass. And in comes Lewis McMillan to step in front and rumble down the sideline for the interception that put Wagner in front 21 to 17. From there, Central Connecticut never caught up. Wagner went up 28 17. Central Connecticut scored. But that is the play of the game and our. Our player of the game, we, you know, we had different mm -hmm. things going through our head. We had Mike Sermonaro, who came in and right. really electrified this crowd and his teammates. Stan House had a great game. LT Brown had a great game for Central Connecticut. But there were a couple of things that happened that helped us out with our decision. First of all, there was a play down in the right corner of the end zone where Lewis Webb, Spud, was on his way into the end zone. And one of the cornerbacks from Wagner knocked it away at the last possible second. Right. Lewis McMillan saved six points. Lewis McMillan saved six points with a tremendous defensive bat away. He saved it. There he is. And then he was the one that intercepted the pass and ran down the field. We feel that the all-around great performance on defense by Lewis McMillan earns him our ESPN Player of the Game. It was a great game. And like we said, this is a full-fledged, intense rivalry that's going on right now. It's a happy homecoming for everyone here at Wagner College. CCSU's got a long ride home. They've got nothing to be upset about. They played an absolutely wonderful game. It got a little bit sloppy late, but they do not have any reason to hang their heads. They are a tough ball club, and they're going to be tough for a long time to come because they have a lot of young guys in that team that played very well today. Wagner College, 5-1. and one. Hamline looking to get into postseason play. Uh, Maris next week, if they go 8-1, and one, I'm sure they're going to be in postseason play. That, uh, that dream was kept alive with this great second half comeback, James. Right now, I want to thank our entire crew for doing a great job as usual. This is the first time that we've been up at Wagner since it's been redone. A couple of problems that we had to get through, but everything worked out fine. The best crew, and I'm going to say it again, and my crew gets mad at me when I say it, the best crew in the Tri-State area, I'll put them up against anybody, anytime. That's all from Wagner College. I'm James Overton for Joe Nugent and our entire Island 16 crew. I want to thank you all very much for watching us here, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Next week, Fort Richmond, Tottenville. Bye, everybody.